Welcome to Southern Florida. It's the 2.4 hours of La Mullets. We are at the Freedom Factory USA here in Bradenton, Florida, and you're seeing it right, 76 degrees. Even by the end of the night, it's still going to be in the 70s, and what a crowd we have here for the second annual 2.4 Hours of La Mullets. I'm Larry McReynolds. He is Nick Savage. Nick, we have 18 4,500-pound Crown Victorians. We've got two drivers per team. We've got NASCAR stars. We've got announcers. We've got YouTubers. We've got bloggers. we got it all here tonight. Hey, it's going to be a party. All I'm saying is click, clack, daddy's back. we got the tag team champions, Nick Savage, Larry Mack. We're at Freedom Factory, and we're going to send it, brother. Let's go. Come on, baby. Let's get it. I'm telling you, we've got about – we've got – so we've got 18 teams. That means we've got 36 drivers. About nine of them, they've never turned a lap this place. But you know what? Before we race, we have to have qualifying, Nick. And what we're going to do is some group qualifying, four to five cars per group. They'll get three laps, one to warm up, and it's the fastest of the two. All of the groups will qualify, and we'll determine who's going to start this race on the pole. Sounds like a plan to me. I can't wait to see uh, what's going to happen tonight. So this is the warm-up lap, and if you watch last year's race, you're seeing something different on the backstretch. It's a kidney-shaped 3-8 mile track. It's almost like a kink, a bus stop, a chicane, whatever you call it, on the back straightaway. It's going to make for a definitely a very interesting race. I'll just tell you that right now. You saw the 20 car there. That's J.H. Diesel and Parker Teeth and Turbos. That's Garrett's brother, who is a dental surgeon. Yeah, it's a, uh, oh, wow. There took goes out one of the water barrels. Took out a couple barrels of qualifying. Jeez. Yeah, when you come off the racetrack in turn two and you get on the skid pad, it, it gets slick. That's con You're going from asphalt to concrete very, very slick. Yeah, it looks like we got Parker Metro right there, teeth and turbos in that 20 car. Last race, the Danger Ranger, uh, he didn't check his mirrors very often, so maybe this race he won't wreck that car. They are sending it through that kidney. It's going to be very interesting to see who hits that very last barrel. It's full of concrete, they said. The rest are water. Yeah, <laughs> Kurt Busch is in the 2501. Just got here about an hour and a half ago, and it, are you talking about getting it through the the kidney part of that? We're gonna. What do you want to call? It? Let's call it the bus stop. What do you think? That's Let's fine. call it the we'll, bus stop. We'll call it the bus stop. I like it. He's getting a feel for that Crown Vic out there. Saw the 21 car. Nick side by side blog is in that car qualifying it. Oh, well, Bush is gonna. A little feel for that car. That's going to be a team to watch for right there, Kurt Busch and Vaughn Gittin Jr. I talked to Kurt out at Charlotte Motor Speedway during a test this past week on Wednesday, and I said, Kurt, the most unique or extravagant thing you've ever done in racing, take it about three more notches, and that's what you're going to experience on Saturday night. Yeah, uh, I talked to Alex Bowman after the first Freedom 500, and he just he couldn't believe how much fun he had racing out here. And Nick, just like before, the crowd we've got here tonight is unbelievable. Just packed house here in the Freedom Factory USA. See the 999? That's uh, Cletus's Human 2 box. James Jackstan. Oh, Jackstan Jimmy out there. Looks like we got the number 74 car. That's going to be Jamie from PFI Speed qualifying. And last year, Brent from PFI Speed was the one that won 2.4 hours of the mullets. Blake Wilkie, Shreddy Life, spun him out. Controversial win, but the transponders being in the back of the car, he was able to get the Is win. The, the other transponder starts yeah. the start finish yeah. line first. <laughs> and again, 18 cars, 18 teams, two drivers per team, uh, one driver. They selected who's going to qualify, and that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the driver that starts the race. We'll have two 45-minute segments, and they've choose, you know, who's going to start, who's going to run the second leg. 88 car, Archibald Waller. He is the driver, one of the drivers that finished in the top two in the Danger Ranger here about a month ago. I think I was putting down some lap times there. He can drive for sure. Glad he's able to make it. I know he's excited to be out here racing. 
And you see the different paint schemes on the car. When I got here today about 1 or one thirty, these cars had a number on it. And whatever color they came, that's what it was. Then the teams, after the drivers meeting about 2.30 local time, went to work just like you see the 74 car there with Jamie PFI. I think that car was white. And look at the paint scheme with spray bomb, I might add. Yeah, they definitely did a number on that car. For sure. Well, you got Jack Stan Jimmy down there getting loose going through that bus stop. We're not going to call it a kidney. We've done made our mind up. It's going to be It's a the kidney bus shaped stop. racetrack, but we'll that's, call that part the bus that's stop. That's the bus stop right there. <laughs> Jack Stan Jimmy did get on his top on the Danger Ranger. He was spun out oh, about right there and flipped his Ranger. And they went down there and got him. He flipped right back over and was ready to go. Never climbed out of the, Never. Out of the truck. He was ready to rock and roll. Like it didn't shut it off. He had no practice for these drivers in these cars. There were a few that took some practice laps last night in different cars, the spare cars, but I might add, in the rain. I'm not sure what they learned last night. It was probably pretty slick, I can tell you that. It's going to be interesting to see how that transition is coming from turn two going down to the bus stop. It's going to be once they hit this burnout pad, and you get about 10 or 15 cars going through there. It's going to be interesting, I can tell you that. Might be a, might be a, a big crash up, pile up, smack them together, and see what happens. The 999 there, Weston Champlin. I talked to him today down in the paddock area from Kansas. He builds weird cars on YouTubes is how he described what he did. No racing experience whatsoever. He did say he had three Crown Vicks in high school. so He could tell us a lot about Crown Vicks, <laughs> couldn't he? <laughs> oh, I love it. What a beautiful night out here, Larry. I love it. Couldn't ask for any better. I know we got a lot of folks up in the Northeast. I saw some videos from Loudon, New Hampshire today with snow flurries. Uh, do not envy those folks. Not at all. How's the crowd doing out here tonight? Let's hear it. That was really weak. How's the crowd doing out here? That's better. There we go. That's a little better. better. I like it. What we got coming up here? This is 1776. David Freiberger, who's actually going to start the race, he's qualifying in that 1776. Looks like we got the 357. That's going to be Ronnie Renner. Ronnie, the Ron Dog, the man, the freestyle legend himself. He's going to be doing qualifying. He's partnered up with Blake Wilkie, Shreddy Life. That's going to be a team to be watching for, for sure. And it looks like we've got the number 22 is going to be Doug from Side by Side Blog and Rick, but Doug is going to be the one qualifying starting us out. Yeah, Doug's going to qualify in, to your point, start the race when we get going here in just a little bit. It looks like that's the number seven. That's going to be Kevin Smith and Taylor Ray. Kevin Smith's going to be qualifying. That's another team very fast. Taylor Ray, podium winner every time he races here. Kevin Smith, same. And they're both racing together. And going through the paddock area, the garage area today, uh, a lot of these cars were bought at an auction. Uh, a lot of them, you can still see where they had the lettering where they were a sheriff's car, yeah. a police car from some local community. Here we go. David Freiberger in that 1776 builds unique cars on YouTube. In fact, he put the two fronts of an Alfa Romeo and made one car out of the two fronts. Incredible. Oh. oh. That's what you call confidence level exceeding the grip level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that bus stop area is going to be the, the highlight of tonight's race for sure. Well, they're going through there pretty good okay right now but that's single car way do we put 18 of them out there together that's when it's going to get fun <laughs> yeah boy they're sending it through there he decided not to send it through there quite like he did the last trip through yeah that's going to be a team to watch right there number seven kevin smith and taylor ray super competitive drivers very fast anything that they drive well, I'm going to tell you what, Ronnie Renner in that 357 really got through the bus stop in a hurry that time. Boy, getting loose right there. Kevin Smith coming out of the bus stop. Here's that replay a while ago when David Freiberger went through one and two. Ooh. 
just wouldn't quite turn. Just that, That's what we'll call a Freedom Factory USA stripe. You know, we've got the Darlington stripe. That'll be a Freedom Factory USA stripe right there. Good thing I know a good painter. Get out here and repaint these walls. They got plenty the of spray bomb over that's there in the right. paddock area. That's going to conclude the third group. We've got five groups total, so two groups to go. See the 38 car over there. That's actually going to be Brian Deegan, which is Haley Deegan's dad, that's going to be qualifying that car. Not only do they have Haley that runs in the truck series, they've got two sons that's starting to run in motocross, and there's a big event up in Gainesville, Georgia this weekend. Uh, Brian and his wife drove down where he could run this race tonight, then they're going to go back to Gainesville for the racing up there this weekend. So right now it looks like after the groups that we've had, uh, Nick in the 21 car, Nick side-by-side -side block is quickest at a 23-26. Well, while we're waiting on the next group to, uh, to come out, why don't we take a word from our presenting sponsor, Summit. Being in NASCAR for all the years, I know the importance of a sponsor, and we want to really thank the people from Summit Racing Equipment for being a part of the 2.4 Hour of Lamullet. So what do you think? We, we've seen three qualifying sessions, Nick, with our bus stop. What do, you, what do you think so far? Well, we've already had one person hit two of the barrels out there. We've already had Freiberger hit the wall, uh, and that's just in qualifying. So I think we're in for a treat tonight. I think it's going to be some real electric racing. I think there's going to be a lot of wrecks. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think the bus stop, it, it's, it, it started off a little rough, but then they started kind of figuring things out. You better believe the drivers that's not in these cars, they are on the outside of the backstretch wall watching what's going on right there. I'd say it's going to get very interesting when we drop the green flag on the actual race here in a little bit. Oh, it's, de it's definitely going to be a, a rat race going through the bus stop area. Um, I'm just interested to see what kind of speed they're going to be able to get coming from turn one, going to turn two, dropping down. Like I said, when you get 18 cars out there, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, and of course, they were told at the driver's meeting. Now, this is uh, David Freiberger again in that 357. This was another This was another hit the wall. This was the 357. This was, was Ronnie, Ronnie Renner. Renner that was a little bit earlier that got into the wall. And they were told in the driver's meeting that if you miss the bus stop, or that's what we decided we're going to call it, if you miss the bus stop in the race, that there's going to be a flagman at the end of the backstretch that they want you to come to a stop, and he will flag you when it's safe to enter back into the racetrack, just trying to make everything as safe as possible. Yeah, that's going to be very important to not go blasting through that backstretch right there because, boy, you talk about a blow-up waiting to happen. It's like the 38 car coming through here. And again, that's going to be Brian Deegan that will be qualifying that car. And then there's the one car, Lyle Barnett, will be qualifying that car. Really unique paint scheme on the tires and wheels. Red, white, and blue, which I'm sure makes Cletus happy. All oh, yeah. about America. We've got that number 50. is going to be Tom Bailey and Steve Morris from Morris Racing Engines. It looks like Tom Bailey's going to be qualifying that. A lot of you guys know Tom Bailey from Drag Week. And that's another team to watch for. It's going to be that number one, Lyle Barnett and Stevie Fast. Mr. Gap himself is going to be out there qualifying that number one car. And that uh, that paint scheme, like you said, it looks like he's got some got some old uh, triple spokes on that thing. Mentioned Tom Bailey in that 50 car. The reason they, I, I couldn't figure out why they had Sick written all over the car, but I guess they just released Sick, the magazine, uh, about six months ago. The logo's actually on the roof of this 50 car. Yeah, when I asked, I said, tell me something about, about Tom Bailey besides he's from Michigan. And the answer was, 
he's just a badass. He's just a badass guy. <laughs> he is a legend for sure. Tom Bailey is uh, definitely roundhouse his way to the top with uh, drag week and just an all-around savage. I mean, that's he's got to be my cousin for sure. And this is Amelia Hartford in the eight car. I asked her about, okay, what's on the hood here? They said that's Parker Kligerman from NASCAR, NBC Sports announcer, will be her teammate, but Amelia's going to qualify the car. Said this is our mascot, Fluffy. And I said, well, if Fluffy's still on the hood of that car come the end of the night, then you and Fluffy, y'all have done a nice job. Oh, that's great. Looked like the number eight car pulled off. 38, I'm sorry. New, it has got to get a new transponder, so 38. Just pulled off the track. Number eight is still on. Yeah, Amelia, she's living in Los Angeles, California. She is a big-time YouTuber. All types of racing she does. Kyle Barnett. Stevie Fast, the one car. Stevie is actually doing the qualify in this one car. A pro mod NHRA drag racing champion. He's a legend himself. He's a big time radio versus the world driver. Uh, anything he drives, he wins. I mean, 2019, 2020, the most winning drag racer out there. So he's pretty incredible. But we'll see what he does tonight. Different kind of racing. Lyle Barnett, he's a savage too. Both good guys. Looks like we're maybe going to wait on the 38 car with Brian Deegan until he gets that transponder situation sorted out. Right before we went to break, again, the 21 car that actually had Nick side-by-side -side blog the fastest so far, the 357 that had Robbie Renner in, the, in it qualifying his second quickest, about over two-tenths slower than that 21 car. Kurt Busch, the 2501, walks in here, gets here about two hours ago, goes out there, and right now, third quickest <laughs> in that 2501 car. He pulled up in a limo bus. <laughs> I thought they were here to pick me up, but it was Kurt Busch, you know, kind of a bigger deal than Nick Savage. He was barely. <laughs> so we're hearing now that while they're getting that uh, transponder on the 38 car, Brian Deegan, he's going to join in with the final group. So right now we only have the three drivers on the track right now making their qualifying attempt. Again, a warm-up lap and then the fastest of two green flag laps. I'm telling you, that number one car, the paint scheme on the wheels that Stevie Fast is driving right now. When it is, when it's going, it's incredible. When it stops, it's kind of got that Pepsi vibe going. It's got that Pepsi logo. Is that a secret sponsorship they're working on right now, or what do you? What's going on here, Larry? I don't know. It almost <laughs> gives me a little bit of a headache <laughs> watching it closely. Oh. I tell you what, that eight car, Amelia Hartford, she is getting through the old bus stop carrying a lot of speed. They they continue to figure, and I I gotta believe Nick. From what I know, not that these tires are going to put a lot of rubber down, but the more rubber that goes down on that concrete surface, it should help the grip level a little bit. Oh, 100%. What do you think, Larry? What do you think the strategy needs to be on these tires with the having the kidney shape going through that bus stop? How much more wear do you think is going to affect these tires? It, it's definitely going to create more wear because you've actually, you, you almost have more corners now when you when, when you truly think about it. And the only way you can change tires is if you have a flat. Great Nitto tire that they brought here. Brand new Nitto tires. They put on all of these 18 cars today. But definitely when you think about two 45 minute segments and, and with the extra part of the racetrack, uh, you don't want to slide them or spin them too much. I think that's going to be a big strategy as well as how hard does the first driver push it to where the second driver has some good tire left. Yeah, you don't want to use them up because, again, you cannot change them if they're wore out. You can only change them if you have a flat. Saw the 48 car there. Cletus McFarlane, he's going to be qualifying. His teammate will be Alex Bowman from NASCAR. Looks like that 801 car of Dave Sparks and Diesel Dave. Looks like Dave Sparks is going to be the one qualifying. And he's throwing a little jab at Cletus with that Astro turf on the back of that car right there. Looks like he might be tearing up some grass himself. It, it looks like a seed spreader on the roof. 
Oh, that is great. So now it makes sense. I walked by that car, the 801 car, 20 times today, and it was just sitting there. And I finally got the word they were at the Home Depot, I guess buying green paint and a seed spreader. <laughs> Where'd they get the AstroTurf from? They must have went to the local putt-putt and just uh, said, hey, let me take about three rolls of that and run on the back of that car. So this will be the last group. And, again, as mentioned earlier, Brian Deegan in that 38 car, he, transponder problem resolved, and he is out there. Then we got the 48 car, Cletus McFarland and Alex Bowman. That's definitely going to be another team to be watching for. We actually had the 801 car uh, with Dave Sparks in it. He actually pulled back into the garage area. For just a moment. I think we've got some more transponder issues, so we'll get that sorted out and we'll get through this last qualifying group and uh, see what happens. And again, I, I know this is the obvious. Sometimes I can be the master of the obvious. The reason we're going to talk about that 48 car a lot, Cletus McFarlane, of course, he owns the Freedom Factory. He's one of the reasons that we're having this show that we're having tonight. And just so many things he does for motorsports. I was talking to someone today. And what Cletus has done, I think, he's pulled people to motorsports that never were interested in motorsports by doing things like this 2.4 hour of La Mullet's race tonight. Yeah, that's, that's one thing that I've always said. I've known uh, Cletus since he started his channel, and he's always kept it relatable. No matter what he's doing, now there are certain things are like, oh, yeah, he owns a track, but look at their $2,500 boat challenge. I watched that the other day when they were racing through the ocean, and L.S. George had that boat vertical, and they slammed down. It was all I could do to not spit my drink out. It's just hilarious. But I want to thank Cletus for having everybody out here. And then you've got Kyle from the Boosted Boys, number 24. Big shout-out to him. He just got over a million subscribers on his YouTube channel. And I've known these guys since they started their channels, and now they all have over a million. It's just, it's just awesome. It's incredible to see them grow and then to stay humble as well as they grow. Yeah, I tried to do some math uh, with some folks today, and I, I think we're very conservative on our number. But but of our 36 drivers that are here, we're talking probably well in excess of 40 million YouTube followers. And I think that's honestly a conservative number. Yeah, they almost have as many as me, so they're close. Close second. Well, one year ago, Nick, we were here, the 2020 2.4 hour of La Mullets, and it did get wild there near the end. Oh, boy, it was just wreck after wreck, and then we had the spin-out finish. I'm not going to lie, it was probably one of the funnest races that I got to announce because we didn't know each other at all, and as the night went on, we just were up here laughing so hard because it was so funny. There's a wreck here. These guys are going crazy. I mean, these guys were in it to win it. Yeah, and, and of course, it was a learning curve. As I mentioned at the top of the show, this is the second annual 2.4 hour of the mullets. And, and Cletus McFarlane owns a track. He had the driver's meeting today. And he said, you know, we have some spare cars, but you don't want to go to a spare car. I would prefer you finish the race the same car that you start the race. Yeah, that'll be nice. Give these new guys a chance to... Come back if they're taken out of this race. We so. did have some fun, that's for sure. And everybody had fun, I think, that was here. Of course, uh, last year when we ran this race, unfortunately, we had a lot of people following and watching on YouTube, but it was during the COVID protocol, and it basically there were no fans in the stands. I think this is the finish you were talking about, Nick, with the spin out coming to the checkered flag waving and where the whole issue was where the transponder is located. Yeah, so it looks like right here we've got Brent from PFI Speed coming out of turn forward. You've got Blake Wilkie coming in hot. Looks like that wasn't the last lap. Yeah, I think, I think that was the white now. flag little crossover move down there in turns one and two. And these guys are chasing hard. These guys are competitors. I thought right here is when Wilkie was going to make the move. Brent shoots down. Coming out of turn three, Wilkie's trying to shoot the bottom of the apron. Coming into turn four. Here we go. There it goes. Cuts it. Too close to call. I did not. I, I couldn't even 
describe what happened there. I was like, I'm not going to be the guy that calls the race and it be wrong because how close of a race it was. Well, we were seeing one thing down there at the checkered flag, and then we were seeing another thing on scoring <laughs> with the whole transponder. <laughs> So, it, was, it was crazy. Well, I have no reason to believe that we won't see something just like that here tonight. And we got a great crowd on hand to see it. And again, as I mentioned, we've got 36 drivers and roughly a fourth of them. The first lap they have turned is what you're seeing right now with these qualifying laps. It looks like Cletus is dropping down into that bus stop area in that number 48 car. You got Kyle from Boosted Boys, number 24. Well, oh, by the way, Dave. Cletus wow. has no problem winning his own race. Oh, he, no. He, not, he's he's not very honest <laughs> about that. Not at all. What a great shot from the drone. You could see the crowd there. Just, I don't think you can take a shoehorn and put another person in this place. It looks like Dave Sparks is out there really sending it in that 801 car. He's not worried about those tires. He's just worried about tearing up some grass. Look at him drifting coming out of that bus stop there. <laughs> I don't think the turf is going to make it. I just don't think the turf is going to make it. That's hilarious. It says, kiss my grass. It's borderline that that seed spreader on the roof will make it. I'll, I'll be interested to see how they strap that thing down because it is not moving, and he is sending it going into the bus stop area. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's laps like that. The, he, with, as Eat good the, as the Nitto tire is, it's not going to make it laps like that. I think with a car set up designed like that, I don't think they're worried about winning. I think they're just trying to put on a show. Well, that's pretty much going <laughs> to conclude our final group of qualifying. And uh, I think we only lost two blue barrels, if, I, if I'm counting right over there, Nick, on the bus stop on the back straightaway. Yeah, that's not bad for qualifying. I, I cannot wait for the first lap to see who gets pushed through turn two shooting down into the bus stop that's going to be very interesting to see but i can't wait so we'll get you the results as soon as we get them from timing and scoring and tell you how we're going to start this 2.4 hour of la mullets with 18 crown victorias and if you may have noticed there's a how about that the whole car is covered <laughs> I don't know. If, I, I doubt there's an award for most unique <laughs> car, but I think this one would win it with a landslide. <laughs> but what I was going to say is there's a yellow light on the deck lid of these cars. And I never did see any of the yellow lights lit up. But these cars have about 90 seconds of nitrous oxide that you can use. Uh, and how you know that they're, it's engaged is that yellow light will come on. There you see the yellow light right there, just on the top of the deck lid, uh, around just above the word kiss. Yeah, you're going to have to conserve that nitrous. It definitely helps on this track, so it'll be interesting to see who saves it for the end of this race. And really, I think it's going to be uh, lap traffic and tires. Again, these things are as, as equally prepared as possible. These drivers could make no adjustments whatsoever. You cannot even adjust the air pressure in the tires. Uh, they do have, uh, unlike last year, they've got kind of a racing seat. It has the full racing harness in it. There's some roll bars that's put in it. I mean, these drivers have to have all the safety equipment, the, the shoes, the socks, the, the fire retardant underwear, the, the fire suit, full face helmet, head neck restraint device. You know, even though we're having fun, we're still not going to take our eye off safety. Oh. <laughs> Boy, it looks like Dave Sparks is out there just sending it. Yeah. It, it looks fast, but I'm not sure it's going to be fast. A lot of sliding around going on with this 801 car. I'd just like to know how they strapped that spreader down. Boy, they got <laughs> that thing on lock. <laughs> oh. He's definitely Boy, he's, getting all there is. He's pushing it, all right. I wonder if he can see through those grass flaps, because it looks like they kind of made it look like the Dumb and Dumber van where they got it looking like a dog, but it's grass. That's going to be his first lap of record. He'll get one more lap. <laughs> Again, the reason he's able to do this qualifying right now, they continue to have a little bit of transponder issues on this 801 car. Oh, there took out. Barrel number three. Wow. 
And they're, just, they're plastic barrels, and Cletus told them at the driver's meeting that they do have a little bit of water in them. They're not, like, full of water. But when they hit those barrels, they're not going to go out there and straighten them back up. And if you knock water on that concrete, woe be unto you. Looks like he just got done qualifying there. Hopefully the transponder worked this time. If he makes any more qualifying laps, he won't have any tires left. <laughs> Well, that's going to conclude the qualifying. As soon as we have all the results, we will certainly give you the lineup. This is going through there, what we were talking about, Nick. Boy, he's coming down hard. Yanks that wheel. Coming out through the bus stop. Looks like he just... There definitely, he was getting all there was. And there goes the barrel right there. Yeah, popped it. Boom. So cars have a high center of gravity, a lot of roll to them. <laughs> He's sending it, I can tell you that. Well, that was fun. That was fun. I know we had a few little issues we had to work through, but uh makes me just really ready to get this green flag rolling on this race. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who's going to come out here and really send it on this first uh, set of drivers and who's going to try to conserve the tire and Who's going to wreck? I feel like it's going to be Wreck City. Well, and, and again, some of these cars will have the same driver in it that just qualified. Some will have the other driver, and the driver that just qualified actually will be in the car in the second stint. So it looks like to me uh, that the 21 car, they did hold on to the pole at a 23-26. Uh, the 357, Ronnie Renner in that car, 23-49. About two and a half difference between first and second. Kurt Busch. In the 2501, Von Gittin Jr., they will roll off third. Uh, Brian Deegan in the 38 car. You know, he, he's used to running on two wheels. He's not used to running <laughs> on a lot of four-wheel stuff. They're going to roll off in that 38 car fourth. And then uh, the boys, Ed Bond, the, that group in the 24 car, they're going to roll off fifth. What else you got there, Nick? Well, it looks like number six, you got Cletus and Bowman. That's going to be a team that I really think is going to be pushing it awful hard in the second part of the race. But I don't know. You got Vaughn, you got Kurt Busch, those two guys right there. But you can never count out Blake Wilkie, Ronnie Renner. I mean, there's, there's some big time racers out here. And I tell you who else I'm going to be really anxious to watch is that eight car, uh, Amelia Hartford. She qualified the car. And they're going to roll off seventh. Parker Kligerman, you know, he's not turned any laps whatsoever. Again, he runs the truck series. He runs some cup races, does pit reporting for NBC. It seems like watching him throughout his career, no matter what he climbed in, he figured it out and he adapted to it. So uh, I'll be anxious to see him when he climbs in that car. Uh, Amelia's actually going to start the car. Parker will be in it for the second segment. Yeah, and I think that you're going to have to watch for that number seven is Taylor Ray and uh, Kevin Smith. Both are always podium, always podium uh, finishers. It's amazing. Well, qualifying is in the books, so while we're waiting, let's hear a word from Summit Racing Equipment. And again, welcome back to the Freedom Factory USA here in Bradenton, Florida. 2.4 hours of La Mullet. The field is set, 18 crown victorias, and we're going to do 45 minutes, have about a 10-minute break. Second driver will get in it, and we'll go after it for 45 more minutes. You know, somebody else that we haven't talked about is J.H. Diesel, J.H. Who. He's one of my best friends, and I'm going to tell you what, we wrote him so hard on Instagram for Danger Ranger Race about last place J.H. I told him I'm going to get the crowd to do a last place J.H. chant, but I didn't do it. But I didn't do it because I was, I was worried that J.H. was actually going to finally win us a, a race out here at, at the Freedom Factory. Well, you know, Nick, I have been to a lot of races, and I've seen a lot of unique pace cars and paint trucks. 
But this is the Summit Racing Equipment Delivery Van, but it's taken on a little different look. They've cut the back of it, and yes, maybe it's hard to tell that's what it is, but it is a long, blonde mullet hanging off the back <laughs> of the Summit Racing Delivery Van right there. It looks like it's full of boxes of Summit Racing parts, so... And I do not know if I want to know what's exactly in those boxes. But you see the mullet there off the back of it. So uh, very, very clever, very unique. Oh, wow. So I guess the reason that it actually was the back that's cut off is uh, the Danger Ranger. Race here about a month ago at Freedom Factory USA. They cut the back and made it look like a little bit like a truck. So the van turned into a truck. So now I guess we'll say the Summit Racing Equipment Delivery Pickup Truck. So it's a van that's been converted into a truck with a mullet. With a mullet now. Got to have a mullet. That mullet is going to be letting Freedom Ring out here once they start that sucker up. I can just tell you right now. The driver is Victor from Bradington Motorsports Park, the owner of the drag strip just outside of the Freedom Factory USA. And they were doing some burnouts with that a little earlier. Uh, it's got a lot of power in that thing. Yep, we call him uh, AKA Baby Drake. His birthday was this week. Shout out to Victor. Big race car guy. Looks like he's got a mullet on there. There he is right there. Give it up for Victor. Let's go, baby. Woo! You know, I, I came here for the first time to the Freedom Factory USA uh, one year ago, did the race with you, and every time I come back, what, what Cletus McFarlane and this whole group here, what they have done with this facility, um, it, it puts a lot of, of top-notch facilities to shame. It just every time you come back, more upgrades and just pristine type of a racetrack. Yeah, these new lights that they put in, they are incredible. From what it was whenever he first bought the track, all the generators everywhere, still wasn't quite enough light. Where can we put generators at? The light system here is incredible. What a beautiful little facility. He is a stickler on this grass. Oh, they spent yeah. some a lot of time and a lot of money on this grass. So they there you go. <laughs> There's Cletus McFarlane with a little in car camera shot. And he's gonna start the forty eight car and then four time cup series winner from two thousand twenty one, Alex Bowman will finish off. The race in the 48 car. Yeah, I was happy to see Bowman get those uh, those victories. I mean, just look at the dash. I mean, nothing has been taken off these race cars. It still has the <laughs> dash lights. It's still got the heater, the air conditioner. It still has the radio. And all they really did was, was put some roll bars in it and, and the racing seat, uh, the racing harness. You see the harness there that, uh, that Cletus uh, uh, put on there when we go racing. So... And he That's told, right. He Give told it up for Cletus, everybody. Meeting, told everybody at the driver's meeting, when you get out, make sure you leave the keys in your car. Yeah, no joke. Yeah, that's awesome. Pretty interesting paint schemes out here tonight. Looks like old uh, Kurt Busch's car's got some uh, fun haver stickers, a little bit of Monster logo on there. Got Victor. Boy, what a great mullet Victor has on. Love it. <laughs> well, Kurt, of course, along with Von Gittin Jr., who is his co-driver, both have the relationship with the Monster Energy Drink folks. So, fitting that they they uh, they were Von Gittin was installing the uh, the LED lights that you see going across the roof right there. Kind of has a limo vibe to that little LED on the roof. Looks like uh, Nick Seuss down there. Some side-by-side uh, -side blog. Ronnie Renner. Looks like Blake Wilkie. Shreddy Life. We see it. Let's hear it for Shreddy Life, baby! Woo! If you come here and do not have a good time, I just, we've got nothing for you. We've got nothing for you. Looks like uh, JH last place on uh, the number 20 car. Teeth and turbos? <laughs> I'd say that that has a tide theme to it. it. Has the tide colors? Oh yeah. I love it. Looks like uh, Haley Deegan hanging out of that passenger window with the number eleven. 
Now, the number 22 car, I love the paint scheme. Looks like, is that the Shasta? Is that like a 1990s throwback? What the ni the 22 car is, I'm still, I, I, if you squint your eyes, you may can figure it out. But what they told me, it's the 90s Dixie Paper Cup look to it. Oh, so, it is. Okay, <laughs> I, I'll buy that. I'll buy that. Oh, that's hilarious. It is. There it is. Some uh, there he is. noodles hanging out the back there. Let's hear it for Lyle, baby. That number one, we got Stevie Fast, baby. Lyle Barnett out there hanging out. He's got an epic beard. And you got Stevie Fast, king of the gap. Yeah, something tells me those noodles we saw hanging off the back of the 22 car, like like the turf on that other car, <laughs> they're not they're not going to stay there very long. No, I don't I don't know. I think if they get if they get one, uh, uh oh, here we go. Looks like we got a celebrity about to walk up here. Looks like Lyle's about to lock that door. Okay, we just come on up here. I know you can't hear, but maybe they get you on this video. Maybe not. But we got the man, the myth. We got the man, the myth, the legend, Lyle Barnett's up here in the booth with us right now. All right, you were going to start, but now you're not starting. So I guess now Stevie Fast, uh, yeah, both so, drag racers. So yesterday, uh, the track was wet. The burnout pad was like a sheet of ice. Um, <laughs> Stevie had gone to do something with Garrett, so I made probably made thirty or forty laps yesterday afternoon. And it was really slick. I ran pretty good. I think I was second quick. So we felt like after Stevie burns the tires off this thing, it's going to take 45 minutes. We're going to be better off with it when the cup comes down. All right. So so what Lyle was telling us is that he feels like that he's going to be better for the second segment, that, that he got a lot of laps when it was slick yesterday. If they knock many more of those barrels over, trust me, it's going to be like they're running in the rain. Yeah, so, no joke. Thank you for joining Hi, us. Hi, brother. Yep. Good seeing you. Yep. Good luck out there. Thanks. Just a couple of great guys got to spend some time with them in the garage area today. Yeah, I'm telling you, it'll be interesting if uh, J.H. and Parker, how that car looks at the end of the race. How any of these cars will oh. look at the end of the race. We're going to try to get everybody lined up, and then we'll drop the green flag and uh, go racing here. Again, 45 minutes, a little bit of a break, driver swap, and then 45 more minutes. 88 car there, Cameron McConchie and Archibald Waller, two of the drivers that finished first and second in the Danger Ranger about a month ago here at Freedom Factory USA. Now, Cameron McConkie was, was full send. He was full send. And, uh, Telling you what, they had Kevin Smith, who's a he is a a, a racer boy, and he got third. So those shout out to those guys for coming in first and second at Danger Ranger. So what an honor to be able to come out here and race in the 2.4 hours of the mullets against some of the top competitors in all of YouTube and in NASCAR. I mean, it's it's incredible. They just keep stacking the deck with stars. That's for sure. Uh, again, I, as I mentioned earlier, I talked to Kurt Bush out at that Charlotte test, and I said, you know, you're going to have fun down there. And he says, i got to go talk to Alex Bowman. He's been down there. He's got to fill me in on what, what this is all about. So I said, you'll figure it out when you get there. Trust me. Yeah, he's about to have a great night. I'm going to tell you right now, they'll be talking about this for a while. Yeah, the crew, shout out to – the Freedom Factory crew out here running around, getting everybody set up. Big time event to put all together and running very smoothly. Thank you guys. Shout out to the crew out here at the Freedom Factory. And then again, if they do have a flat tire, we mentioned earlier, you can't change these Nitto tires just because you think they've lost grip or they've wore out, but we've got a crew over in the garage area, over in the paddock area, and they'll change a the tire pretty fast. Now, Cletus Totem said, when you get there, if you have a flat tire, you may have to be patient. There may be a line waiting, but we will get it changed. Look at that. Kyle from the Boost Boys in that 24 car, Larry. Look at that. They got flame coming out of that turbo. There he is. Look at that thing. Move out of the way, Kyle, so we can see that sucker. 
Look at that, Larry. He's got <laughs> how about that? Got the that fire is awesome. coming out of the turbo. That is awesome. That is great. I love it. Big shout out to Alan. His birthday is tomorrow. Let's give it up for Alan out there. Yeah, baby. There you see those flames you were talking about, Nick. And that is a Honda bow cover that's bolted down as well because everything that they customize and that they do ends up with a Honda engine in it. So that's a Honda valve cover right there on this 24 car. And this car talked about sheriff's cars, Collier County. It used to be a sheriff's car in Collier County. Yeah, that's uh, I went up to Kyle from Boosted Boys Shop yesterday and was able to look at his shop and look at his NSX. He's got the world's fastest NSX right now. It's a K-swapped NSX. He also has the fastest MR2, which is K-swapped. Everything they have is a K-series. They K-swapped the world. So, big shout-out to those guys, good friends of mine. I love it. Look at all the smiles on everybody's faces out there. They cannot wait to get in these cars and let it rip. We have just about got everybody lined up, so we should go racing here just shortly. 2.4 hours of Lamullis. I never will forget when Cletus McFarland called me well over a year ago to come down here and do that first race with you, and he was explaining it. And my first response was, you want me to come where and actually do what? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, who's this Nick Savage guy? What in the world? Freedom Factory, who? You got Diesel Dave down there. You got Dave Sparks out there on that 801 car. Out there pushing that thing. Come on, boys. Push that sucker. Let's go. Tear that grass up. <laughs> I love it. His, his only other asphalt <laughs> experience on an oval, I was told, was in Minnesota racing a bobtail tractor. <laughs> it's a long way from Minnesota on a bobtail tractor. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, that's, a, that's an awesome uh, design that they have on that car. I want to know how they got that sucker strapped to the top of that car. It didn't move during qualifying, so whatever they did, it's, it's in good shape. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah, they probably got some of that Gorilla Glue. There he is. He's just loving life down there. Yeah, he's, that number 24 car, I, I don't know how they got that flame just rolling out of that turbo like that, but I love it. Shooting out a little bit of the boo -boo 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 boosted boys. I'm telling you, another car to really watch for is going to be Brent, PFI Speed, and Jamie and at number 74. The winners of the 2.4 hours of the Mullets last year. Hey, Nick, can I interrupt you for I'm a second, Nick? You, it's going to be something. Now, why, hey guys, that'll start. Can I get a hell yeah, brother, on three? It's his first One, time two, to three. Here at Freedom hell Factory. Yeah, brother. Kyle actually all finished right, 12. Right, perfect. Just making sure you're with us. Yee yee. George, hit him with a Buenos Dias. Hey, can we get a Buenos Dias on seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Buenos Dias. Yeah. <laughs> Fire me up. Couldn't ask for better weather. Rain the last couple days down here. Beautiful night. I believe Cletus is a little fired up. And, you know, one thing that I, I admire about Cletus McFarlane, and I learned this about him when I got to know him a year ago, he's all about America. Yeah. Whatever is American, he's all about it. admire that so much about him. Crashed out in the recent Danger Ranger race. Yeah, if he's all about, all about that American made, shout out to Motion Raceworks. Another sponsor of the track. Got Texas Speed. You got Holly, Nitto, Heat Wave. Official sponsors of the Freedom Factory. Shout out to you guys. I know we got Doug Cook. We got Andy Cook in the house. Motion Race Works. Big shout out to those guys. American made products. Support your local American made products. We need more of that in this country. Yes, we do. Absolutely. Well, what's your, what's your favorite car tonight, Larry? What's favorite paint scheme? The, they, they, I love them all, but, but I've got to say, 
I believe the 801, Dave Sparks and Diesel Dave, I, I think it goes to the top of the charts because I know they worked very hard. And basically about two and a half, three hours ago, they were still at the Home Depot gathering all their commodities to, to do this. Yeah, it's a, it's a good-looking car out there. I, I love the uh, AstroTurf. I'd like to see where they got that from. Maybe whenever they tear up this grass, they can just go over there and cut some of that off and just throw it in. I see what you guys are doing down there. Got them big old Texas mud flaps going. <laughs> I think we're going to see our drivers getting buckled in here directly. Of course, we will go through and do our national anthem and all the things that we should do before we get this race started. Again, I, I don't want to go back to Charlotte, North Carolina tomorrow with the weather like we've got down here in Bradenton, Florida, right in the low to mid-70s, no humidity, just amazing weather. It's, it's gorgeous down here. No better place to be than at the Freedom Factory down here in Bradenton, Florida with my man, the legendary announcer himself, Larry Mac Reynolds, in the house. I don't know about legendary, but I've, I enjoy doing this with you. I really, really do. I've enjoyed all the trips that I've made down here, this being my third and my second one. I believe Cletus is having fun, too. He is, uh, he's loving it. And I told everybody, I said, I'm not going to come to 2.4 hours of the mullets again and have Larry outdo me with the chain and with the ring. Larry's got, is that the 1998 it is, yeah. The 1998 Daytona 500, it was, I was t telling you earlier, uh, the 1992 one that I was able to, to win with Davey Allison, something happened to my fingers between 1992 Zoom in. Put, and put 1998. Put your hand up there so I can see that sucker. And uh, the 92 one won't fit, but I'm proud to wear this 98 to, to be able to win it. See, you, you got the bling. I, I, had to, the bling. I, had to, I had to break out a little. Watch out. It's not a championship ring. But it's a heavy-handed ring, so well, we're ready to go. <laughs> that's, that's okay. That's okay. We're, we're going to have some up? fun tonight. It, it's like I told you earlier. You know, we, we may not have all the information right. We may miss on some calls. But you know what? One thing you will not be able to accuse us of at the end of the night is the fact we're going to have fun. How about let's go down with the star of the show, Cletus McFarlane. That's Cletus McFarlane out here. All right, let me get one more. Hell yeah, brother. One, two, three. Hell yeah, brother. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Ladies and gents, remove your hats. We're going to hand it over to Spicy Spence in the flag stand for our national anthem. All right. Can you turn the music off? Thanks. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of Some freaking racing at the Breeder Factory. Let's freaking go! Let's get all the drivers to the cars. 
so I can give you a real spicy countdown and we can rev these Crown Vicks to the moon and get this show started. We have a list Absolutely. Of let's first. get this show started. Let's get them buckled in. Let's go racing. 2.4 hours of we have a list of who's running Mullets. first. Nice job down there, Spicy Spence. Nice job. Do we have one? Got it. Okay. I believe the crowd's ready for him to go racing. Let's go. You boys and girls are going to want to get on your feet here in just a moment. Once these guys are ready to rip, we got the newest rendition to the track layout at the Freedom Factory, something we've never seen before. A race where the rules can change a matter of three or four days before the actual race day. You guys ready to have a good time? All right, let's see if we can get our driver's attention. Start your engines. Oh, the sweet sound to my ears. What do you think, Larry Mack? Is this the show you've been waiting for all year or what? I love it. It does not matter if it's the Daytona 500, the championship race at Phoenix, or the 2.4-hour Earl of Mullets. The best words you ever hear Drivers start your engines, even though they're just turning an ignition key. They still are cranking these engines on these Crown Victorians. Well, I'm telling you, that 357 car of Ronnie Renner and Blake Wilkie, they're going to be ones to watch. And they're starting out in the front. There you see the, the racing harness that I was talking about. You see Cletus McFarlane, two shoulder straps. Comes over the shoulders, lap belt, submarine belt, all buckled in there. And they've got race sievers. You see the little yellow thing on his chest? It's a race siever. Basically, uh, race control, the flagman, can actually talk to these drivers, it's especially when they're trying to get them lined back up uh, for a restart. Lyle Barnett in that one car. Again, his teammate Stevie Fast actually uh, qualified it. He's going to be, looks like Stevie Fast is going to be racing that as well. Yes, the first, he is in getting the in there. Team. He is, yeah. That's the, we, we got the change there just a little bit ago. That 24 car got Kyle from the Boosted Boys. And you got Wyatt. Looks like Wyatt's going to start out that number 24 car. Seventy-four car going to be starting pretty deep in the field, hey back guys, in the fourteenth position. Can you guys Brent make some noise PFI. for Summit Racing? Come on, they've uh, Summit Racing it has sponsored like quite start a few that events in a row for Brent us, and uh, try to have a repeat of last year of two point four hours all the coming back with, back with so another thanks, W. Summit. Yeah, they just they made the decision. Uh, I guess the fans spoke, and Cletus answered. Let's do something different. So, you know, again, they're calling it a kidney-shaped, three-eighths mile high-banked oval because of that kink or what we're going to refer to as the bus stop in the back straightaway. Come off turn two, make a hard left, back right, little straightaway across the skid pad, another right, back left up into turn three. It's a little interesting twist to it. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, going to be very interesting when you have about the first six or seven cars dip down out of turn two going into that bus stop. Yeah, we've really not seen side-by-side side through there just yet, but we will here <laughs> just, just shortly. So I guess let's clear the racetrack. We're ready to get this started. Drivers are basically all buckled in, so if everybody would clear the racetrack, we will start the pace laps and get this Saturday night, Friday night party started. Summit Racing Equipment Delivery Truck. Got to get used to calling it a truck now with a mullet, a truck with a mullet. The mullet truck with all those Summit Racing boxes in the back. 
Well, I'd love to have all those parts show up to my house. Oh, absolutely. Summit Racing Equipment, a big sponsor of the 2.4 hour of La Mullets, as well as the Freedom Factory USA. I love it. Boy, they got that, <laughs> they got that side by side loaded down. It was so much fun today, Nick. You were down there as well, just, just watching these 36 drivers get into decorating and painting these race cars. I, I mean, uh, one of the cars, I think it may have been the 74 car with Brent and Jamie PFI, uh, the spray painting with a little bit of wind blowing didn't work out so good. <laughs> Next thing I know, I watched them over there, and they had a razor blade scraping the overspray off the windshield because it pretty much had covered the windshield. Yeah, it was, uh, had quite a nice little breeze going and heavy overspray. There's a 74 car. And mentioned earlier, going to roll off back in that 14th position. Yes, boys. See the 50 car there. Now, Tom Bailey qualified it, but Steve Morris, he's going to start this race in that 50 car. And the more I look at that number 22 car side-by-side -side blog, it does look like the old Dixie Cup. Well, that's I, I had to ask. <laughs> Everybody I asked, I said, is there a theme with your car? And that, that's the theme that they told me that it was right there. Some people, when I asked them about their theme, they said, we have no idea. We're just painting. So at, like, lap two? Yeah, I thought it might have been the old Shasta. It's an old school 90s vibe. Bringing it back. See you at the big end, boys. See you at the big end. See the 21 car there that's on the pole. The American flag hanging out the back of it. Nick side-by-side -side blog qualified it, and he will start the race. Zeus side-by-side -side blog will get in it for the second part of this 2.4 hour of La Mullets. Yeah, they're, uh, they're big time uh, big dog. Hashtag Big dogs only. You were showing me some of those side by sides that they've brought here for tomorrow's burnout competition. It's it's incredible. They have that uh, that side by side with the two JZ motor in it, and it's a Jurassic Park theme. It's it's a ripper. We went to Glamis uh, last year, and they had just got that thing done. And let me tell you, that thing is scary fast. Saw a race quip on the head and neck restraint device there. Cletus McFarland supplying a lot of the safety equipment for these drivers. You see the uniform as well. Fire retardant fire suit that Cletus is running. Yep, this top four, Larry, is going to be really interesting how much is going to change within the first five to ten laps. How hard are they going to send it? Are they going to kind of reserve them tires or just maybe just fill out this course with running side by side through that bus stop area yeah the 21 car as we mentioned two and a half tenths over the outside of the front row the 357 right there but when you look at about third through about seventh or eighth we're talking about a tenth and a half separating them in their qualifying runs so the summit racing equipment delivery truck has pulled off big the mullet burnout. behind big burnout big, big smoke smoky burnout Get this thing started here just directly. Looks like all the cars have rolled off. I know we had a little bit of an issue in the Freedom 500 back in the spring. But it looks like they've all rolled off. Headlights, taillights burning, LED lights blinking. We got it all. Well, look at them going into that bus stop area. You talk about about to be a cluster. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will. But it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Now, I'm wondering on that 801 car is if that grass is so long that another car is going to be able to run over that and rip that sucker off. Or No doubt in my mind. <laughs> it's, not, it's not if, it's when. <laughs> oh, that's great. If only one of the brothers could be on top of that car pushing that spreader, that would be even better. Well, unfortunately, with the qualifying run they had, <laughs> nobody's behind them to run over it at the green flag. <laughs> Oh, they only qualified about six times, but I bet they got about half that tire left. And again, when the green flag waves, a 
clock will start 45 minutes and then when we get right toward the end of that you'll see the white flag and then you'll see a checkered flag and that will end that 45 minutes they'll stop on the back straight away about 10 minute break the other team driver will get in the cars we'll re-rack them throw a green flag go for 45 more minutes yeah in the front of the pack you got nick side by side blog you got number 357 ronnie renner right there next to him He'll be on the outside it's like that number 38 car. We'll be back there. Haley Deegan's in that. 2501, Gittin Jr. Von Gittin Jr. just sewed up the Formula Drift Championship. Uh, his last championship was 2010, and now he just won the 2020 Formula Drift Championship. Cletus McFarland in that 48 car. Cletus is always fun to watch on restarts when he started racing. He kind of warned everybody about restarts today, but I was thinking, Cletus, maybe you need to hold a mirror up in front of you <laughs> as you give this sermon on the mat about restarts. Yeah, he said, he goes, you know, he goes, uh, don't restart how I've restarted every one of these races, every single one of these races. So. Don't do as I do, do as I say. Exactly. And you got that number 24 car of Wyatt from the Boosted Boys right next to Cletus. So, Nick, the Summit Racing Equipment Delivery Truck is off. Green flag is in hand. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing. 2.4 hours of one bullets. Looks like that 21 car. Nick side-by-side -side blog's going to come into turn two. Staying out front, Ronnie Renner's going to swoop down into that bus stop. Can they make it through there? Oh, looks like some contact going through there. Oh, wow, we got that 2501 car had to go through the grass. But they did make it through there. Nobody spun out, so lap one was clean. Woo. Yeah, looks like Nick from Side by Side Blog is going to swoop down to the bus stop, followed by Ronnie Renner in that number 357 car. Boy, we got a big wreck coming out of turn two. Boy, it looks like he just took out a barrel. Another barrel. Yeah, that was the wow. eight car of Amelia Hartford that got off over there, but everybody is back running now. And this is what's going to be interesting here. All this water that's on the track coming into turn two going out of the bus stop area and there's plenty of it down there nick oh wow boy those cars are going to be getting loose still got nick number 21 side by side blog leading the pack with ronnie renner in that 357 car and ronnie renner in the 357 he is not going away but i'm going to tell you who i'm impressed with is brian deegan in that 38 car back there in third yeah that's brian deegan earlier i said haley deegan apologize for that brian all right. Well, I'm telling you what. Still running pretty strong out in front. Got Nick side-by-side -side blog, followed by Ronnie Renner. And then you got the number 38 car. Wow, another barrel got smoked oh, out yeah, there. Oh, yeah, that was the 999 Weston Chaplin. He just got another barrel. We were running out of barrels fast, but like Cletus told him at the driver's meet, water on the track, barrels on the track. We're going to keep digging. <laughs> now it'll be interesting to see as we got Nick from Side by Side Blog coming in some lap traffic here. Ronnie Renner swooping down low out of turn two. Boy, another barrel getting smoked. Now our leaders are starting to lap some cars. We just saw Weston Tampa get lapped in that 999. And the next car to get lapped will be the 801 car with Dave Sparks in it. Looks like Dave Sparks out there making the show, letting it eat, boy. Looks like you still have the leaders. Nick from Side by Side Blog, you got number 38. Yeah, Brian Deegan. Brian he just, Deegan. He just, he just went by the 357 car with Ronnie Rennie. Well, he I'm is gaining you, wow. big time. Here we go, coming into this bus stop area. Top three, you got your number 21, Nick from Side by Side Blog. You got Deegan behind him in the number 38. 
You got Ronnie Renner in the 357. Looks like you got Von Gittin Jr. in that two or that 2501 car. These two right here, the 74 car and the 20 car, 74 car Jamie with PI, PFI, and then Park Teeth and Turbos. And now we got blue barrels everywhere. Got Stevie Fast, looks like he spun out into the grass. Took out those barrels. Boy, it's about to be a nightmare down there. We got a few barrels standing on the entrance. We got a few barrels standing on the exit, but not many in the between. The open, it looks like you still got Nick from Side by Side Blog out in front. Looks but like Ronnie Ray is getting a little traffic. contact on Brian Deegan, that number 38 car, trying to make a pass. Looks like we got Ronnie Renner sending it through the bus stop. He's going to come out of the bus stop number one while he passes Nick from Side by Side Blog and Brian Deegan in the number 38 car. Yeah, he went from third to first, and now he is pulling away, and that was all about lap traffic right there. That's what I was saying, lap traffic and tires. You can either make it or break it with lap traffic. See Vaughn Gittin Jr. in that 2501 all over that 21 car right now with Nick side by side blog. Vaughn's just been making his way up through there. Yep, you still got Ronnie Renner out in front. You got Brian Deegan falling up, number two. Looks like you got Nick with the side by side blog and number three. Vaughn and Cletus back there bumping to coming out of turn two a little bit, a little contact going into that bus stop. Cletus should be back there in the fifth position in the 48 car, and their caution will be on the speedway. Well, Larry, I'll tell you what. We're about four minutes in, and you talk about some action. Four minutes, and uh, we only have about four barrels left standing, <laughs> I think, over there in the, in the bus stop. Right now, it appears that 357 Ronnie Renner, who went from third to first, will be the leader of this race right now. Brian Deegan in the 38 will be second. Nick side by side blog will be third in the 21 car. Yeah, it looks like uh, Ronnie Renner in that 357. Boy, he made a slingshot coming into that bus stop and just went around all three competitors. Ronnie Renner, a freestyle motocross rider, highly decorated as a step-up rider, also a Red Bull athlete. Talking about Ronnie Renner in the 357 car who will be the leader as we come back racing here directly. So here's the 999 Weston Chaplin as he's going to get one barrel. And you see all the water. He's trying to fight to stay on the lead lap right there, but I don't think it worked out just for him. And one of the top two finishers in the Ranger Danger race came down to, to run this thing tonight. Look at him stacked up coming through the bowl bus stop here. Yeah, Larry, whenever they... Put the poll on uh, on Instagram and put it on all the socials, and they voted for the kidney. I wasn't real sure. I just figured, you know what, it's going to make for a great race. And so far, it's been Barrel City. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's been fun. The barrels are still laying there as we come back to green flag racing. Let's see what can happen going through one and two. Brian Deegan in that 38 got a great start. He's going to take the lead, but can he keep it as we head into the bus stop? Yeah, it looks like got a little contact going out of turn two, swooping down. Deegan still in front. Got Ronnie Renner trying to catch up from behind. Von Gittin Jr. right on his tail coming out of turn three. 1776 with David Freiberger. He's starting to come into play back there, racing with Cletus McFarland in the 48. Yeah, it looks like got Brian Deegan still out in front. Ronnie Renner trying to swoop down. Vaughn Gittin Jr. got Nick from Side by Side Blog. You got Cletus in that 48. Looks like Deegan's out here trying to make a little bit of a stretch, put a little gap on that Ronnie Renner car of the 357. It's Cletus McFarland in that 48 car. Back there in the fifth spot right now. 
You know, Brian Deegan in that 38 car that, that's leading this race, he's the most decorated freestyle motocross rider in X game history. I don't think it matters. Two wheels, four wheels. He figures it out. You see the yellow light that was blinking on that 38 car using a little nitrous oxide trying to pull away from second place right now. He's trying to put that NASA gap on old Ronnie Renner there, but it looks like Renner's going to swoop down hard in turn two, try to make up a little time in this bus stop area. Can't use it all up. I mean, we still have 37 minutes left in this <laughs> segment and 45 more minutes, and I still see that yellow light blinking on that 38 car. <laughs> oh... Yeah, he's ripping right there coming into turn two. Heavy on the brakes. But you got right behind him, Ronnie Renner. You got Bond Gittin Jr. and you got Nick from Side by Side Blog, followed up by Cletus McFarland in that number 48 car. Ripping into Terran through the bus stop area. Yo, know, Brian Deegan, he's out there just leading this rap. Like you said, I don't think it matters if it's on two wheels or four. He's out here full send. He's trying to get this first uh, first heat victory. And, and with the brake lights working on these cars, I, I can see what Brian is kind of doing with the brakes. He, he just he uses a little bit, then he gets off of it. Yeah, Bond getting Jr. Uh, shooting through the grass right there. Got a little slick coming in the bus stop. Still got Brian Deegan out front about six car lengths ahead of uh, Ronnie Renner. In this battle here, the 88 Archibald Waller. In the 999 at Weston Chapel. He took out a few barrels just a little bit ago. Definitely some barrels with his name on them back there. <laughs> yeah, it looks like old uh, Deegan still out in front. Ronnie Renner in second. Followed up by Vaughn Gittin Jr. Nick from Side by Side Blog trying to make a pass right there going into turn two. A little bit of contact in turn two going into the bus stop. Able to pull it out, Vaughn. Looks like we got a little battle going on here with uh, Stevie Fast and Wyatt from Boosted Boys. I'll tell you one thing, Stevie Fast is drifting it, boy. He's up there <laughs> sending it. <laughs> he had a double hand full right there. Boy, that's wild. Love it. Love to see it. So you still got Brian Deegan out in front. You got Ronnie Renner, number two. You got Von Gittin, Jr., number three. And you got Nick from Side by Side Blog in four. And you got Cletus McFarland. In your top five. And Nick in the 21 car, Nick with side-by-side -side blog, he just got two of the barrels on the exit of the bus stop. <laughs> Boy, they're showing right here. You got, oh, here we go. Right back on it. Get a little contact going into the bus stop. Nick side-by-side -side blog. Oh, about to spin Cletus out coming out of the bus stop. Vaughn going in the grass, drifting, coming out of turn three. And while they're doing this, you see that seven car with Taylor Ray in it. He's coming into the picture three wide down the front straight away. <laughs> oh, this is great. Wow. These guys are going at it right now. Well, I tell you what, Brian Deegan has got a commanding lead right now. I think what happened to Cletus right there in the 48 car, the exit of the bus stop, he got in a lot of that water right there. You could see his car just jump sideways. Yeah, he's out there pushing it. Got Vaughn right behind him, swooping down. Yeah, there's quite a bit of water out there. It looks like it. I'll tell you what, Brian Deegan, he has just yarded himself in that 38 car. Yeah, he's half a track ahead right now. He's putting about three NASA gaps on everybody in the rest of the field. The only thing that's going to save everybody else right now is some cautions. Well, and what's really going on with second, third, fourth, really starting to get into some lap traffic right now. And right now, Brian Deegan in the 38, he's pretty much got clear selling. You see him dealing with the 88 car right there, Archibald Waller. But he's pretty much got a clean racetrack in front of him. Yeah, lap traffic's a big deal, you know. A lot of people sit there and say, oh, lap traffic's not that big a deal. Well, you're seeing it right now. It'll make it or break it for you. We see the 357 right there. Ronnie Renner trying to take advantage going through the bus stop, and he will clear that lap traffic. Looks like we've got a caution here. Like I said, that's about the only thing that's going to close the gap. As you see, Brian Deegan right there going out of the bus stop. He's at least a half a track ahead of Ronnie Renner in that 357 car. But you got a caution. 
we still have a lot of racing. You see right there in the upper left-hand part of your screen, over 33 minutes to go in this first segment. Well, there's not very many barrels left. No, there's not. I see four <laughs> on the exit and four or five on the entrance, and as I said earlier, nothing in between. <laughs> like we got a car here. If that's Taylor Ray, looks I'm not like. sure though. That I think that was on that windshield. These cars are from some past oh, races, that's right. so I'm not sure who had to go into a spare car, but I think that was already on there from the last race. Because yeah, Taylor Ray was out there battling uh, in that seven car, was battling with Von Gittin Jr. and Cletus McFarlane. Well, look at that Summit Racing Pace Van Mullet Truck. Mullet truck, still there. Truck Mullet Van. <laughs> well, I, I want to say, Nick, and I, I know I don't want to jinx us. We've got a lot of racing to go, but I want to say with adding the, the kidney part of the racetrack, what we call the, the bus stop, really been pretty fun, clean racing, hard racing, but clean racing. Yeah, I mean, realistically, uh, Brian Deegan pulled away um, – pretty heavy because you got Ronnie and everybody else hitting that lap traffic. And that's what it's going to boil down to. I think it's going to be the lap traffic and who has the better tire. Yeah. I think the only person that's really upset right now is the mom and dad of these blue barrels. They're probably the only <laughs> ones that's not happy right now. There's one that made its way, must've got stuck underneath the car. And I see it just past the start finish line here, just to the inside of the racetrack. There you see it. <laughs> Oh, that was Amelia uh, getting taken off there and that looked like a spare car. Yeah, Amelia Hartford, she started the race in the number eight car. She actually started in seventh, had to go to a spare car, but they now have pushed her off the racetrack. Parker Kligerman scheduled to get in that car for the second run of the 2.4 hour of LaMullets. Well, Larry, it's been a great time to be able to announce with you again. What a great night. I love it. Having a great time here at the Freedom Factory. Well, I think everybody's having fun. I know I'm having fun. You're having fun. No doubt these drivers are having fun. And I have to believe the crowd's having fun. Oh, 100%. Well, I don't see uh, Diesel Dave's car out there. They must have had to have pulled off. Uh, must have had too much turf action. Yeah, I'm counting right now just a quick count. We've got about 15 of the 18 cars that started out there on the grid right now as the Summit Racing Equipment truck pulls off. We'll get a restart here with just a little over 30 minutes to go in the first segment of the 2.4 hours of LaMullins. What can Ronnie Renner do with Brian Deegan on this restart? Well, it looks like... Uh Deegan using that nitrous on that restart there. Renner hot on his tail going into turn two, dropping down low. Looks like Cletus McFarland's trying to make a pass on the outside coming in that bus stop area. If I keep seeing that yellow light come on on the deck lid of Brian Deegan's 38 car, LS George is probably going to say, wait a minute, what'd you do? There's no nitrous left in our car. Yeah, he's using it again. Every, every uh, coming down that home stretch there, he's using that nitrous, so. Well, we got Cletus McFarlane. He's becoming a player. He's going to take that second spot away headed into the bus stop. What a little contact there. Ronnie Renner and Cletus McFarlane going through the bus stop area. Brian Deegan still with a commanding lead coming out of turn four. Weston Chaplin in that 999, he is just attracted to those blue barrels. He just got him another <laughs> a second ago. Well, he's getting a free car wash tonight. Looks like Cletus trying to make a little uh, run right there, going through the bus stop, making up some uh, lap traffic time and trying to close that gap on Brian Deegan. You had mentioned Taylor Ray in that seven car. He just took the fifth spot away from Von Gittin Jr. in the 2501. That's another car you're going to have to be watching for. Number seven, Taylor Ray and Kevin Smith, both great drivers. Well, they're pushing it awful hard going through that bus stop. Love it. Hey, Cletus has got his work cut out for him in that 48 car if he's going to run down Brian Deegan. Brian is just, he's so smooth. 
entering through on the exit of the bus stop. Yeah, he's picked his line. He's sticking to it. He has no lap traffic to worry about. Literally, he is picking the line, and he has not come off that line every time, and he continues to close the gap. Hey, we just had Taylor Ray in the seven car. He just put, I think it was the 21 car of Nick side by side block all the way in the grass in the entrance to the bus stop, and he's going to take that four spot away. Taylor Ray continues to move ahead. Look at Cletus in there. I don't even think he's blinking right now. Oh, he's, he's focused, though. I'm telling you right now, one thing about Cleese McFarlane, he is a competitor, very, very competitive individual right there. Brian Deegan still out in front, about six car lengths ahead of Cletus McFarlane, that number 48 car, followed by Ronnie Rondog Ritter. And you got Kevin Smith and Taylor Ray. Looks like Taylor Ray's in that number seven. Yeah, Taylor Ray in that seven. He just keeps picking them off one by one. He is got right now the 357 with Robert Renner in his sights. Boy, look at that. Looks like some contact going through the bus stop area. You got that 1776, the number 88 car. Ripping through here, old Freiburger, about to try to close the gap. Coming out of turn three. But once again, you look at Brian Deegan. He has got literally He's got at least a, a quarter track on, on Cleese McFarland right now. Either the yellow light has a short in it or the damn nitrous oxide is <laughs> going to be gone. One of the two. Well, they might have uh, done some tampering to that wire, and they <laughs> might have connected that with the brake lights because, I mean, he's used it a lot. I mean, I'm so impressed to how he's working the apex of, of, of the four corners through the bus stop on the back straight. Using that nitrous again, coming out of turn three, going into turn four. Brian Deegan coming across that finish line right there. And then you got Cletus McFarland running a little lap traffic. His brother, Parker Mitchell, teeth and turbos. And we literally mean teeth and turbos, a dental surgeon, Cletus' older brother. Then you got Ronnie Renner in that uh, 357, followed by Taylor Ray in that number seven car. Looks like Taylor Ray's about to pass Ronnie Renner. Looks like you got that number 50 car. The number 22 side-by-side -side block. Battling it out there, coming out of the old bus stop. Okay, they're back there battling. Looks like just a quick glimpse somewhere around 8th, 9th, right in that area. Yeah, you got it's old Steve Morris and Morris Racing Engines out there battling it out with the old 22 of Doug from side-by-side -side block. And I'm telling you what, they're out there trying to get it. Yeah, these two here, they are going at it right now. Come down the front straightaway, side by side. Ooh, a little bit of contact. A little bit of contact. Spun out. Yes, he Turn did. Turn two. 50 car. Steve Morris <laughs> goes around battling with the 22 car with Doug's side by side blog in it. Woo, boy, I'm telling you, that Dixie Cup put him in the grass. He's waiting on, it looks like he's trying to wait on clear racetrack, but right now they're strolled all the way around this 3 8 mile track. He might have a little bit of an opening coming up here. Still spun out. Just can't get an opening. He better put it in reverse and let it eat. Because right now they're like a conveyor belt around this racetrack. They're all the way around it. There he goes. I believe he's going to. Boy, he just did get it going there with Vaughn getting Jr. in the 2501 coming through. But he is back rolling, and we stay green. It looks like Brian Deegan's still out in front. Cletus trying to close that gap, coming into turn two. Yeah, Cletus is not going away. He keeps searching around, trying to find it, but just Brian is so good through that bus stop. Looks like Cletus closing that gap right here, coming into turn three, staying low, right behind. Looks like he's following the lead of Brian Deegan. And Brian, before he even turns off the front straightaway down into one, he uses brakes, and then he gets off the brake as he turns the wheel. Looks like Cleves McFarland in there with that in-car dash cam. Showing him out here just ripping and tearing. Super focused guy right there, big YouTube guy. And it's not long before Brian Deegan is going to get into some lap traffic. That may be exactly what Cletus McFarland in that 48 car needs, especially if Brian catches lap traffic. I mean, there's like 
five or six cars within a half a straightaway. He's right here uh, falling. Looks like, oh, boy, I'm telling you, Stevie Fast getting loose right there. Didn't face Brian Deegan, just goes right around him coming across. You got Cletus McFarlane, that number 48 car, still in second place going into turn two. And I know people may say, well, look, the second, third place car, they've, they've got to fight the lap traffic too, but I've just learned with my experience, lap traffic just fights the leader a little harder. It does, every time. Lap traffic will make or break a race, 100%. Looks like you got Ronnie Renner right here battling it out with Vaughn Gittin Jr. About to go into turn one. Looks like Vaughn's trying to make a move on Ron, on a, uh, Ronnie Rondong Renner there. Well, I'm going to tell you what, Cletus McFarlane's going to have a good opportunity. But actually, Brian is pulling away from Cletus now, even though Brian is starting to catch the tail end of the field. Well, end, dash, end, end car camera of uh, Vaughn there. Pretty awesome to see. Looks like you got the number 24 car, the Boosted Boys. That'd be Wyatt battling it out, a little lap traffic. Once again, Brian Deegan, that 38 car, still pushing it hard out of turn four. You got Cletus McFarlane right behind him. He's going to have to carry him three wide going down into turn one on the oh, apron. He slid contact. out the racetrack. That'd like to have been big right there. <laughs> He's pushing it awful hard right now, I'm telling you, in that 38 car. But he is just ripping and tearing through lap traffic. He's going to hold it down low. Cletus McFarland, about two cars behind him, fighting that lap traffic. Now this is going on. Taylor Ray is still back there in that seven car in the third spot, not making a lot of headway, even though he has put some ground on the 21 car with Nick side-by-side -side blogging it back there in fourth. Looks like we've got a little bit of... A little contact right there. A little Brian Deegan trying to push it out of turn four. Well, he knows if he gets held up too much, that 48 car is going to be there. And right now, he cannot get by the 22 car of Doug side-by-side -side blog and a host of others in front of him. Looks like Cletus is fighting off. There's a, there's contact right there in the bus stop. They're able to keep it together. Cletus about spins out coming out of the bus stop. That was an opportunity for Cletus McFarlane, and it did not work out for him as he gets together with a 24 car with Wyatt Booster Boys. Once again, that lap traffic gets in the way. Oh, here we go. We got Chaplin fighting it out with old Jamie PFI Speed coming out of the bus stop. We got Deegan right behind him. Deegan should be in good shape right here because after all that happening, the 999 Weston Chaplin ended up way high in turns three and four, so he clears him now. He sets his sights on that 74 car with Jamie PFI. Boy, look at that. Looks like you got teeth and turbos out there lighting the tires up in the burnout pad. Must know the race is over because for him, them tires are gone. Yeah, pretty much there will be no grip left in the rear tires. He's just sitting out there just enjoying the evening right now on the skid pad. <laughs> Boy, you talk about just letting it eat. Can he bust a tire out there? That's Parker Mitchell, teeth and turbos, letting it eat. He crashed out of the recent Danger Ranger, actually the same time as Cletus crashed out in that race. He's still burning them down out there. Looks like Brian Deegan still pushing it awful hard coming into the bus stop area. Well, he if, he, got, if he can clear those two cars, Nick, he has really got a lot of clean racetrack in front of him. He's fighting it out right now, trying to pass Jamie from PFI Speed, fighting that lap traffic. Fleet is still about half a track behind him. This is what happened to Cletus McFarlane. You see him coming out of turn two. Going to enter the bus stop. Side by side right there. Gets up in that grass and I'm sure got a lot of moisture on the tires as well as the 24 car there with Wyatt Booster Boys and just did everything but spin out, Nick. He saved it there because, boy, that really put him behind. Still in second place, Cletus McFarland. I'm telling you, Brian Deegan is the one to talk about right now. Still out in front, pushing that car to its limit, coming out of the bus stop, turn three, coming up high on turn four. 
And you got Cletus McFarland, the number 48, still about oh quarter track down, but quarter track down, not that big a deal whenever you're still in second place and you still have another half of the race to go. Well, the old crew chief never leaves me. I pulled my stopwatch out of my pocket. It's about a three and a half second <laughs> lead right now for Brian Deegan over Cletus McFarland. Now all those drivers that Brian had to fight that are lapped down, Cletus is going to have to fight them. There's about four of them up there. Yep. Brian still out in front with the commanding lead over Cletus McFarland, that number 48 car. You got Brian Smith, Taylor Rays, and actually in that number seven car. But Deegan's out there putting on a show. Yes, he is. Hot lap traffic. Now he has nobody in front of him. He's the leader that has the lead. <laughs> yeah, he's got a clean racetrack. But we got a far from clean racetrack right here. You see Vaughn Gittin Jr. in that 25 Oh, one car getting a little bit of pressure from the 357 car of Robbie Renner. Ryan Deegan still out in front in that number 38. The 999 just went around down there at Weston Chapel. That was courtesy of somebody. I couldn't tell who exactly it was. And the caution will fly with just a little over 17 minutes to go in this first segment. Looks like another car just pulled off the track. Be interested to see who that was. Parker Teeth and Turbo. I think the right rear, the rear tires are absolutely gone. Well, we got a caution out here. Hopefully the guys understand. Oh, there we go. Yeah, courtesy of Robbie Renner in that 357 car. Of course, Robbie battling for position. Weston was several laps down in that 999. So it looks like we've got the number 38 car, Brian Deegan, still in the number one position. We've got Cletus McFarland of the 48, followed up by Taylor Ray of the number seven. And then we got the number fourth position in the number 21 car of Nick from Side by Side Blog, followed up by Vaughn Gittin Jr. in fifth place. But unlike other sports, if somebody's got a big lead, it takes a while. All it takes is a yellow flag. Yep. That three and a half second lead is gone for Brian Deegan in that 38. Caution flag is a big help whenever you're down. <laughs> yes, it is. You don't want to see it if you you're leading. You don't want to see it if you're leading. <laughs> you, you want to see it if you're running second like Cletus McFarlane. So, you know, we've got some lap traffic that's mixed in front of them right now. So this is where it gets interesting because we're going to go back racing probably with just a little over 15 minutes to go in this segment, 45 minutes more to go after the break. But uh, this is where it'll be interesting is with the lap traffic that's mixed in with the leaders. Yeah, like you said, you've got some lap traffic that is mixed in with this restart. Which, if you're the leader, you don't want that. But let's see what happens coming out of turn three. About to be on this restart right here. Brian Deegan, the 38. Gets a great start. Gets a great restart. See the 50 car Steve Morris there. He's going to fall in line. Cletus McFarlane's going to have to fight to try to get around that 50 car. Oh, there's contact at the bus stop. Cletus saves it. Yeah, that was from the 22 car. Doug side-by-side -side block. He is a lap down, but he just about took Cletus out right there in that 48. Well, I tell you one thing that made Cletus hot. Somebody that's a lap down taking you out of the race. <laughs> Brian Deegan still out in front in that number 38 car. Cletus McFarland in the 48 coming out of turn two, swooping down to that bus stop. Brian Deegan still with the commanding lead. And Steve Morris in that 50 car, even though he's a lap down, he is not just laying over. He's fighting to try to get back around Brian Deegan, which I think will be to no avail. Right now, it looks like no one can pass Brian Deegan in that 38. Brian is out there. I'd like to see how much nitrous is in that bottle. I feel like there's none. <laughs> Sorry, LS George. <laughs> see the 2501 there, Vaughn Gittin Jr. Battling with the 24 car, Lane Boosty Boys. Yeah, this is this is great. What a great race. Brian Deegan out in front. Got Cletus McFarland right behind him. Right now they're showing Vaughn Gittin Jr. battling out with Wyatt from the Boosted Boys. Looks like they're swooping down right now to the old bus stop. Vaughn getting a little loose right there. Coming into turn three. Boy, that's a cluster waiting to happen. Got Wyatt still pushing it hard in that number 24. While this is going on, Robbie Renner 
in that 357, he has made his way up to the rear bumper of these two. There you see Vaughn getting junior in what that a, 2501 what, car. What a cool view to be able to see them in there just racing, ripping and tearing in these old Crown Vicks. The 2501 of Vaughn getting junior pushing an awful hard out of that bus stop, getting a little loose. You got Ronnie Renner right behind him. See if there's some contact going out of turn four. Keeps it clean. Ronnie's still pushing it awful hard going into turn one, trying to chase down the number 21, the 2501 of Von Gittin Jr. Boy, it looks like Wyatt got loose right there. Swoops back into the bus stop. Again, he was, he was at least one lap down. He was not up there battling for position in that 24. Looks like a pretty good little battle going on there with Von Gittin Jr. and Ronnie Renner of that 357 as they swoop down to the bus stop right now. You got, looks like they switched over there right to Jamie, PFI Speed, battling it out with the number 24. Wyatt from Boosted Boys. Once again, that 74 car, Jamie, PFI Speed, Brent was his second runner in the 2.4 hours of the Mullets. They took home that win last year, the two El Caminos. This year, two Fieros. Pontiac Fieros, and they are sweet looking. I saw them back there. Again, one for each driver of the winning team. Well, i tell you what, if Boosted Boys or PFI Speed gets it, they're going to put a K-Series in that thing. K-Swap the world. Once again, you got the 38 car, Brian Deegan, out in front. The 48, Cletus McFarland, followed up by Taylor Ray in number seven. And you got fourth position. Fourth position in the number 21 car, Nick, side-by-side -side blog in the fifth pole. Coming up right there is Ovon getting in that 2501. Yeah, I've been watching that 21 car with Nick, side-by-side -side blog. He has pulled up right to the rear bumper of Taylor Ray in that seven car as they have caught the lap down car, the 22 car of Doug, side-by-side -side blog. Boy, they're pushing it awful hard right there, Vaughn. You know, Ronnie just battling it out through the bus stop area. Closing in on 11 minutes to go, 11 minutes. We've run a lot of laps. We really have run a lot of laps, but again, we've only had those couple of three cautions. Yeah, these cars out here, it'll be interesting to see what the tire's like and how much nitrous is left in that number 38 car. Got Brian Deegan still the commanding lead in that number 38. Followed up by Cletus McFarland in that 48 car. Looks like he's running into a little bit of traffic right there going through the bus stop area. Taylor Ray in that number seven trying to get around number 22 side-by-side -side blog. Yeah, Nick, right now Brian Deegan has pulled out to over a six-second lead over Cletus McFarlane. He's entering the bus stop off turn two. Cletus McFarlane just going through the middle of turn one and two. Incredible. He's still pushing that car awful hard. Brian Deegan is absolutely out here sending it in that 38. You got Cletus still trying to push it. He's trying to fight through that lap traffic. Still sitting in your number two position. Stevie Fast out there ripping around that number one car. But Nick, you know, thinking about Brian Deegan, something tells me when you have two gold medals, two silver medals, and eight bronze medals in Summer X Games, you don't know anything but wide open. Yeah, why, no, nothing but win, 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 win. All I do is win. That's it. And I didn't win by going half throttle. That's right. Commanding lead right now over Cletus McFarland. But what will happen on the second part of the race? Is that car going to be pushed down to its limit? He's, he's gotten everything out of it, but I'm going to tell you what he did is he pulled up on a car. The 11 car has dealt him a fit. Now, that will be the car that his daughter, Haley Deegan, will be in in the next segment. But that C-Boys TV in it right now just about got into him going through three and four the last time. It looks like they're showing the battle right now. Vaughn Gittin Jr. and Ronnie Renner going through the bus stop area right here. Vaughn still ahead of oh, Ronnie, the Ron Dog Renner. This is a battle for fifth between these two. You can see the movement in those cars and that in-car camera of Von Gittin Jr. right there. A lot of body roll inside those Crown Vicks. 
You know, I have no idea what the center of gravity is, but it's not low. It's not good. <laughs> Boy, they're sending it awful hard right there through that bus stop. Boy, Taylor Ray had a little bit of contact with the number 21 car side by side blog. You just wonder what a race like this on Von Gittin Jr. Is, is, according to the scoreboard, we've run 72 laps around this 3-8 mile track. He's used to about a minute worth of drifting, and that's about it. Get out of the car and wait to do it the next time. It was like I was telling some of these drivers earlier, Larry, on some of these first races, these cars get so hot that they don't really prepare themselves for how hot inside these cars get because they're stripped down. And they just, they get hotter than you know what in there. Yes, they do. Once again, you got the number 38, Brian Deegan, in the lead, followed up by the 48 car, Cletus McFarlane, Taylor Ray coming up in third in that number seven car. Just watch the 2501, Vaughton Gitt Jr. coming out of the bus stop. He was definitely sideways, just continues to try to fight off that 357 of Ronnie Renner. What a commanding lead that Deegan has right now. Cletus is still fighting. He is fighting hard through this lap traffic, but you know that in his ear they're saying, listen, you're still number two. Save the car. You know Bowman's back there going, can't wait to get behind the wheel. Well, and again, Alex Bowman, to your point, he will be behind that 48 car right there, the blue 48 for the second segment. And I know the two races that he did prior to this, fast Fast. He's a super, super fast. fast guy. Great, great person. Good friend of mine. Once again, you got Brian Deegan out in front, followed up by Cletus McFarlane in that 48 car. You got Taylor Ray about a car and a half back behind, getting caught up in a little lap traffic, trying to close the gap. Cletus McFarlane right there in the bus stop. They still continue to hit barrels that's already been hit back there. They just knocking them further off the racetrack. It's almost like they've run through there enough now. Most of the water is gone, so that's not an issue back there anymore. They're they're ripping awful hard. Looks like Taylor Ray takes the number two position away. And that lap traffic made a huge difference, unfortunately, for for Cletus McFarlane because now you see Vaughn Gittin Jr. in the 2501. He has pulled right up to Cletus. Cletus sitting in the number third position. Got Vaughn Gittin Jr. right behind him. As he swoops down. Oh. Look at him. You got Cletus McFarlane at number 48 swooping through the bus stop, followed up by Vaughn Gittin Jr. Cletus needs to get up there back to the seven car of Taylor Ray because now he is in all types of lap traffic. Taylor Ray trying to chase down Brian Deegan of that 38 car. Well, like you said, Larry, lots of lap traffic going through the bus stop. Right now, Taylor Ray is, look at him, but they are sliding these things now, especially on the exit of the bus stop. But Taylor Ray, he's now trying to work on that 21 car of Nick's side-by-side -side block. Well, i tell you what, five minutes remaining. And it'll be interesting to see if they get another caution here. Can the number seven car, Taylor Ray, close the gap of Brian Deegan? Well, we talked about the turf. But the American flag has had a rough go on that 21 car. It's uh, <laughs> barely hanging on right now. What a what a what a beautiful what a beautiful night out here, Larry, at the Freedom Factory. I tell you what, on this second half of the race, I don't think there's going to be but about eight barrels left. Well, all I know is. Great race a year ago, great race when I was here for the Freedom 500, but I think adding this bus stop, making this a kidney-shaped racetrack, I think it's truly helped the racing for sure. Oh, definitely. Here goes Cletus McFarlane on the outside of that seven car, Taylor Ray. Well, they're battling it out right there, Vaughn Gittin Jr. right in the mix. This would be a battle for third right now because the 21 car, Nick side-by-side -side blog up there in second. This is quite a battle with just a little bit of time left to go in this first segment. Is that 21?
Brian Deegan in that 38. Still working through some lap traffic. See one of the spare cars that's been used. Really all you can do is hand spray paint a number on a spare car and put the transponder on it. That's about it. He's got a text message here from Parker Mitchell. Said the car went down a couple cylinders laps into the race. They told me just to stop. So he went ahead and sent it. All the tires were shot on that sucker. So 20 that cars 20 car is, in the middle. is done. The tide ride. Teeth and turbos and JA2. Looks like another last place finish for JA2. It's a battle right here for third. It will not go away. The 11 car now. At Seaboys TV, he is not on the lead lap, but Von Gittin Jr. in the 2501, Taylor Ray in the seven. That is a battle for the third spot. Looks like we've got about one minute left here. Once again, looks like you got Brian Deegan out in front. Ripping through. And we're going to see a white flag this time for Brian Deegan. One more time around this 3 8 mile high bank track. Can he seal the deal? He just needs to play it safe. Doesn't need to get too aggressive because he still has that lap car, the 24 car with Wyatt Boyster Boys in front of him. So just take it easy right here. Yeah, like you said, I think it's really just going to come down to the second part of the race. How much nitrous is left? There it tires is, left. Brian Deegan, he wins the first segment of the 2.4 hour of La Mullets. Just put on a clinic right there in that 38 car. Like you said, he picked his line and he stuck to it. Fought a little bit of lap traffic, but realistically he was so far out ahead, he hit the lap traffic, pick another line, and then get back onto his original. In Putting L a clinic, like you said, on how to race this track. In LS George, he will be climbing in that 38 car. It will also be his first time to ever compete at the Freedom Factory USA. One thing about LS George is that guy can tear some stuff up. <laughs> Not sure that's what Brian <laughs> Deegan wants to hear. <laughs> He's fast, though. He's fast. We'll see. But what a great part of this first race here. First part of the 2.4 Hours of the Mullets, the second annual 2.4 Hours of the Mullets with your man, Click Clack Daddy's Back, Nick Savage, the man, the myth, the legend, Larry Mack. Yes, we are. And remember, the 21 car, Nick's side-by-side -side blog came home second. And then Vaughn Gittin Jr. in that 2501 car held on for third. He will hand that car over to the 2004 NASCAR Cup Series champion, Kurt Busch. Now, that'll be interesting to see Kurt Busch, first time at the Freedom Factory, running in the 2.4 hours of the mullets in a Crown Vic. Now, as far as I know, Kurt Busch has not even been in these cars, has not made a lap in these cars. Like we said, he got here about an hour, hour and a half before the race started, and I think he's here at a roundhouse. Well, he, he, his first lap, they were qualifying because he did qualify that car, and he, he got all he could because he ended up third in the 2501 right, car. So, again, we're going to take about a 10-minute break. They're going to stop him on the back straightaway, and uh, the other drivers will get in, and we will see what happens. And in the meanwhile, let's hear from Summit Racing Equipment. Well, that's 45 minutes in the book, 45 <laughs> minutes to go. We ended up with six cars on the lead lap. Cletus McFarlane handing that car over to Alex Bowman, the 48 car. He was the last car on the lead lap, finishing back there in sixth. Yeah, it's going to be interesting uh, to see what's going to happen on the second part of the race. Brian Deegan had such a commanding lead, but how is that car right now? Is there any nitrous left? How's that front left tire on that car? Is the front right tire destroyed? I mean... How hot's that motor? I mean, it's just crazy to see. 
what that car's going to do. Well, and again, I, I, the strategy of, of Cletus McFarlane putting Alex Bowman, winner of four cup races this year, he's going to be in there for the second segment. And you think about Vaughn Gittin Jr., a man that's won all those cup races and the 2004 championship, Kurt Busch, he's going to be climbing in that 2501 car. So I think that was their strategy all along is to have these guys with a lot more oval track experience in those cars for the second segment. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Alex Bowman out there in that 48 car. I think he I think he holds the record right now on this uh, racetrack. So, well, let's go down and see what Spicy Spence has dug up for us. All right, guys, I'm here with Brian Deegan, our race leader. You led probably at least 70 or 80 percent of the laps. That was an amazing job out there. How do you feel? Man, I feel good. That was fun. Um, I usually race on the dirt, so it was kind of like dirt. We had grass and water on the track. I think that, that's where I excelled. When it got real slick, I was able to do the off-road skills. And, uh, man, I had a blast. That was fun. Everyone was pretty respectful, kind of, so it's all good. I <laughs> but it's, it's amazing to see your car. You have a very powerful car that you were given because you crushed it out there on the straightaways, in the turns. You were putting some serious distance. You probably had at least... Um, a half lap distance <laughs> on the lead driver. It was awesome. I, I like how you said you had a good car. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> no, but the driving, the skill I impressed hear, us. No, no, I hear you. I, my car was pulling away. I was giving it a little bit of roll speed onto the straightaways, trying to inch away. Trying, I was trying to have a little technique, but the car was good, dude. I, yeah, yeah, it was awesome. good. And I saved the tires. Uh, trying, to, trying to give uh, L.S. George some, some tire. Yeah. And now it's just up to him now, right? <laughs> That's all I can do. I'm done. That's all I can do. No Thanks. pressure. Well, thanks, Brian Deegan. Good luck out there. Your teammate, Ellis George, really has to hold it together to not let down the teammate. All right, let's make our way back to the field. You guys heard from Brian Deegan, our race leader. He had such a fast car, but the skills that it took to manipulate that bus stop, that kidney turn right there, avoiding the water, cutting the grass, using a little bit of that as a shortcut, really helped him pick up some seconds. Let's go stop by Nick Seuss from the Side-by-Side -Side blog. Um, Nick Seuss, how'd you finish? Hold on, what, <laughs> what position is it right now? What position am I in? Does anyone know? Can I, anyone confirm? I believe you're in fourth. There's no or third. No possible way I'm in fourth. Or Why do you not feel that way? No possible way. I've lapped so many people. Yes, you have. Spence, don't make me raise my voice. What, what do you see? I'm looking at light poles. What do we see? Oh, you're in second. You're in second place. This is un okay. this is unacceptable. <laughs> unacceptable. Spence. Well, dude, this isn't NASCAR. I don't have it printed out with the stats right, in front listen, of me, but. Listen. Oh, it. it's getting crazy it. down here on the back straight. Spence, Spicy Spence getting kisses. Let's find Cletus McFarlane and see if we can get a race recap from him as we navigate through. A lot of these cars are still intact. Um, rumor is we have 16 cars still left. Let's touch base with Vaughn getting Jr. here. Hey, Vaughn, you got a second for a quick word? Wow, outstanding job. I saw you and Cletus really playing. Oh, the that was game. amazing. Yeah, it was so much fun, man. Just running banging doors with Cleeter and all the boys out here. Uh, I'm just, you know, I went out to save the car and get it, you know, keep it nice and good for Kurt to come in and finish it up. So I'm pumped. I think we're sitting in third. So uh, what a blast. I hope you guys at home are having fun. Yeah, we are here at the stands. We are having a blast watching you hold that fourth and fifth position. It was like, it was probably one of the best battles I've seen in the first half of the 2.4 hour lay mullets, but you killed it because you kept great position on the track and you're giving over a good, healthy car to your teammate to really put him in a position to win. That was a plan. By the way, good job on the Star Spangled <laughs> Banner, bro. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. I've been practicing all week. <laughs> See you, brother. All right, Vaughn, good luck. We got Kurt Busch as a special guest here. Uh, at the 2.4 hours of Le Mans. It's getting in. He's Vaughn Gittin Jr.'s uh, uh, backup driver, his partner driver. Let's touch base. Look who we have here. The man, the myth, the legend, Cleese McFarland. Woo! <laughs> Fire me up. <laughs> I don't know what position we're in right now. Five, fifth or sixth. Car is dialed. I mean, huh. Bowman's going in, so I ain't even worried. You know what I'm saying? My job was to not wreck the car somehow. By the grace of God, my car is not wrecked. I mean, these guys are sliding through the mud, effing up my grass, <laughs> and running into me. I'm like, dude, I'm on the lead lap. I got lappers hitting me. Thankfully, we made it through. The mirrors are good. I got to suit my boy, Alex right. Bowman, up. We're getting this W. One question. When Vaughn and you were playing a little bit of bumper touching, dude. was that a thumbs up you held out the window or a thumbs down? Listen. 
It was a thumbs up, but I, I was about to fight him. I was about to fight him. I saw the grit in your eye. All right, Cletus, thanks for putting on a great show. You guys heard it from Cletus. He's out there. I think he's in that maybe fourth or fifth place right now. Let's make our way back down the field, and we're going to see who we have back here. Again, a lot of this is lap traffic. So you guys know at home, I think we may only have six or seven cars on the lead lap right now. I want to try to find some other drivers. We got Taylor Ray and Kevin Smith. Let's go check in with those guys. Alex Bowman right behind you, Chris, is getting in the car right now. Cletus giving him a prep talk, letting him know which turns to hit it hard on, which turns to take it easy on. Haley Deegan suiting up for the second half. Looks like she's going to be the relief driver here for the number 11 car. Oh, we got some more Doug and Rick from the side-by-side -side blog, guys. Who went first? That was Doug. How'd you do, Doug? Not bad, man. Not bad. I felt like the car was a little bit slow, uh, struggled a little, but our plan was for the first driver to save it and finish, you know, in striking distance. And I don't know where I'm at, but I'm sure I'm deep into the top ten. Car's still in good shape. Didn't use any nitrous whatsoever. Oh, really? So I think it'll be a good car for the second half. We can get a little more aggressive. See, that's funny because one of the main cars I saw out there, Rick, was that the uh, lead car, Brian Deegan. He was on the car so we're gonna see how it plays off we got a hole in our nitrous line too so we got a short period of time oh well so how do you feel about the car that he's passing on to you in your in your sitting in this in the second start of the race he took good care of it so i'm pretty excited about it i think uh we have a good shot of moving up the pack and doing some good work so we'll That's see what happens dude i'm excited to see you guys out there you are no strangers to the freedom factory but this layout is definitely throwing you for a loop very oh, different it's tough, it's tough really well really good tough. man all right good luck out there rick Wow, a lot of these drivers are sweaty. You can see the intensity in their eyes. Very high adrenaline as they get out of the vehicles. We have Taylor Ray. Really. All right, Spicy Spence, we appreciate it. Sorry for the audio issues. So just to kind of give you up to date, uh, we've got six drivers on, six teams on the lead lap. The, the 38 car is the leader with Brian Deegan now handing that car over to L.S. George. 21 car is in second. Nick, side-by-side -side blog, handing it over to Seuss. Uh, the 2501, Vaughn Gittin Jr., third, handing it over to Kurt Busch. Spoke with Taylor Ray in that seven car. He's fourth. He's going to be handing that car over to Kevin Smith. Fifth, the 357, Robbie Renner. He's going to be handing that car over to Blake Wilkie. And then the last car on the lead lap, Nick, will be Cletus McFarlane in the 48 car, handing his car over to cup driver Alex Bowman. Yeah, it's going to be, that's going to be a car to watch right there is that number 48. Um, I think Kurt Busch is going to be another one to be watching that 2501 car. And, of course, you got the number 38 that led basically the whole race. And uh, what can L.S. George do with that number 38 car? Does it have any nitrous left? <laughs> I saw a lot of yellow light. That's all I can say. And, and, and the other thing to factor in is we've got 45 minutes to go when we get the green flag. We have three drivers that are one lap down. In seventh was a 22 car, and that was started by Doug at, with side-by-side -side blog, handing it over to Rick. And then the Boisty Boys, they ended up eighth in the 24 car, one lap down. And then the 74 car with Brent and Jamie PFI, they are the last car one lap down in the 74 car. So we have nine drivers that are on the lead lap or one lap down, nine drivers that are two or more laps down. Yep, it's, uh, it's been a great race. I cannot believe the commanding lead that, that Brian Deegan had. Smooth. Just, I, just, I, that's the thing I just couldn't get over, just how smooth. It's like unless he had to deal with lap traffic, he never missed the apex of the entrance through the infield part of the bus stop and on the exit over into turn three. Just smooth. But, again, let's see how much nitrous oxide that old 38 car has got. Yep, I think it's going to come down to lap traffic, caution, and how them tires doing. Yeah, he, he, his claim was he was not hard on the tires. So, you know, we, we will certainly see. But these.
These Nitto tires, I think unless you really, really abuse them, I just think the Nitto tire, the hour and a half of racing that we're going to do here, I think you're going to be just fine with them unless you just have slid them time and time again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, I think you're going to have um, Alex Bowman's going to be up there at the front, Kurt Busch, and we'll see what Ellis George can do here. It's going to be interesting to see. Then you got Blake Wilkie coming in for – uh, Ronnie Renner, and you know he got second place last year. Then you got we can't forget about Brent from PFI Speed, number seventy four. What was their strategy? Did Jamie just kind of hold back, not destroy the car, and then let Brent come in there and try to roundhouse this event? So it's going to be a great race. I can't wait for the second part of it. Yeah, a lot of experience up there, with the exception as we mentioned, LS George. It's in that thirty eight car taken over for Brian Deegan. No laps turned here at the Freedom Factory USA. And Kurt Busch, I don't know that I'm worried about Kurt Busch because he rode through the gate, put his driver's uniform on, and went out there and qualified that 2501 car in the third spot a little bit earlier this afternoon. There you see Kurt in the one car, going to be driving for 2311 Racing next year. Bubba Wallace's teammate, team owned by Denny Hamlin, and the GOAT, Michael Jordan. That's right. Good old Jordan. I was going to wear my Chicago Bulls uh, sweatpants tonight, but was told no by my old lady. <laughs> <laughs> Cletus McFarland, they asked all the drivers from the first segment to stay and make sure your, your second driver is all buckled in good and ready to go. So there Cletus shuts the door on the Crown Vic. Alex Bowman aboard that 48 car. Yeah, you know Cletus is out there just loving life. What a great race that he's put on here. I think with them making it into a kidney shape really brought a big dynamic to the race, and uh, it's been interesting so far to see what's happened. Yeah, I had no idea, even though we've had all kinds of, of conference calls and Zoom calls and talking with each other, making sure we had our eyes dotted yeah. and these crossed, <laughs> I had no idea until I walked in here this morning that they had changed the backstretch. But, again, I, I, was a little, I wasn't real sure what to expect especially after talking to some of the drivers that did some testing last night or practicing. But, again, that was in the pouring down rain. So I don't think you learned a thing last night. But that was, uh, that was fun watching them in that first segment. But what will happen now? Yeah, once, they, uh, once he posted that on Instagram, I did a poll on mine as well, and it was uh, 8614 kidney. So heavy favor for this kidney race. And so far it's turned out to be a, a great race. But the grass is honestly not as tore up as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be destroyed. Don't jinx it, Nick. We still have 45 <laughs> minutes to go. I know a good lawn guy, so we're good. Diesel Dave might have to get that, uh, that spreader off the top of his car and get out there and get to seeding. You know, you saw that shot of Kurt Busch there right before we saw Alex Bowman. I, I think a lot of people forget how versatile he is. You know, Not only – with the, the 22 years of experience and 33 wins in the Cup Series, but went up to Indy in 2014 and competed in the Indy 500. Did double duty between the Coke 600 and the Indy 500 and finished sixth in the Indy 500. That's hey, what's amazing. up, guys? It's your boy, Cleeter. Like I said, Kurt Busch is going to be a big competitor out here. We're all having a good time tonight. And, um, we'll see. You got him, Alex Bowman, battling it out. What do you guys you got Brent, GP, PFI GP, Speed, GP, your uh, reigning winner from 2.4 hours. 2.4 hours of La Mullet. So much water and mud so. on the track. It was insane. It's drying yeah, up now. We're getting I some good racing. Alex Bowman's in six right now in my car, number 48. I'm really rooting for him. Who thinks Brian Deegan and George are going to win this? Oh, who thinks Vaughn and Kurt Busch? Kurt Busch is in now. Man, we got Ronnie Renner right there. Oh, actually, Wilkie's driving now. Man, really good lineup, guys. I hope you are enjoying the clean racing. We tried to keep it a little cleaner, a little less cautions tonight, and uh, just having a good time. Well, the LED lights uh, on Vaughn Gittin Jr., now Kurt Busch's car, is still blinking on the roof. So the cars really, all the cars really look in good shape. Really look in good shape. Yeah, they're not as destroyed as some of these uh, past races out here. But you got Ellis George in the front right there. And uh, 
Oh, Kurt Bush, you know he's excited to get out there and let it rip. And to my point, you see the fourth row there, the 22 car that will now be Rick side-by-side. Side. Uh, he is the first car a lap down, and then on the other side of him will be the 24 car with Kyle Booster Boys in it. He's a, the second car that's one lap down. Yep, you can't ever uh, hold old Blake Wilkie out of this thing. That guy right there, he can race. Doesn't matter what he's racing, that guy's competitor. Then you got Kevin Smith in that number seven car. Kevin Smith got third place at Danger Ranger. And uh, he doesn't race NASCAR, but I tell you what, that guy is fast. Anything he's driving. So you got Blake Wilkie in the 357, and you got to watch for that number seven car of Kevin Smith. who's going to be right there next to Kurt Busch. Like you said, you just got done naming off all those wins he's got. I can't wait to see him and Alex Bowman battling it out. There you see the A car. Now, this is one of the backup cars. This car was started by Amelia Hartford, and now Parker Kligerman will be in that eight car, uh, trying to get some time here at the Freedom Factory USA. He has never raced here before. Uh, quite a number of laps down for that eight car, but Parker's here to have fun. Oh, yeah. Who do we got there in that number 24? Looks like that's going to be Kyle from the Boosted Boys back there behind Alex Bowman. Yep, he's, uh, he's in eighth right now, one lap down. And you got that number 22, which is going to be Rick from Side by Side Blog right behind him. And you got old Brent from PFI Speed. Like I said, what was the strategy there? Do you think that Jamie was like, hey, let's save the car, see what we can do on the second part of the race, not destroy it, and let Brent go out there and just try to really push it hard and to see what they can do? You just you never know, and the real thing you know you're trying to make sure. To your point earlier, is just is take care of these Nitto tires. And I'm pretty impressed. We still have several of the noodles that's hanging out the back of the 22 car. I never thought they would see lap 10. Yeah, they're they're still back there. It's pretty incredible. They must be using that gorilla glue. We've got about 16 cars out there. We, do have a few few of the spare cars that's been used. There you see the Summit Racing Equipment Delivery Truck. Just letting it eat. Got Victor out there. He knows how to smoke them tires. Let's hear it for Victor. Well, I think for the Freedom 500 back in the spring, uh, he led more laps than anybody did. Yeah. We had so many <laughs> cautions. There Mullet. it is. We got Parker Mitchell right down there, teeth and turbos. If you need any implants, go talk to him because that guy right there knows how to blow up a motor. Boy, look at that mullet on that Summit Racing truck van delivery vehicle. Delivery truck. Delivery, delivery truck delivery mullet truck. haver. And it's letting freedom ring. Look at that old mud flap back there just letting it eat. It looks like to me, Nick, that we've had to tap into maybe about three of our spare cars. Again, the spare cars, they were sitting out back, and as Cletus told them, uh, not sure you want to have to revert to those because they've been sitting for a while. So it looks like to me we've had to, to go to about three of them. We've got had five total back there. Yeah, and that number 21, that's Nick Seuss out of uh, Side by Side Blog. He's sitting at number two. Going to be... Uh, Battling out there with L.S. George in that 38, followed up by Kurt Busch in that 2501 car, and then the number seven of Kevin Smith. We're going to see who's got what. Is Green Flag is waving 45 minutes to go in the 2.4 hours of LaMullets. There you go, L.S. George is going to swoop down right there into the bus stop. Got Kurt Busch trying to make a pass right here, right away, hot on that bumper going through the bus stop. Wow, takes out some barrels. That didn't take long. Wow, look at that, boy. We got Kurt Busch pulling away. The number 38 of L.S. George getting loose out of turn three to turn four. And then the 357 with Blake Wilkie. You talked about him, Nick. He's going to take that second spot in a 21 car with Zeus side-by-side -side block. He moves into third. We got Kurt Busch out there and, and taking that lead, followed up. Wow, getting real loose right there. Blake Wilkie spins out in turn three. Here got Kurt Busch right there in that 2501. 
Followed up by Nick Seuss getting some contact right there with Kevin Smith of the number seven car. Kevin Smith's going to take that second spot away from the 21 car. Seuss side-by-side -side blog. Not sure Kurt Busch out front is what the competition wanted to see. Well, I tell you what, if he can keep that car together, it's going to be an interesting race. But you got Kevin Smith, you can never hold him back. He's that number seven car, followed by the 21 of Nick Seuss of side-by-side -side blog, cutting down to that old bus stop. Now, L.S. George in the 38. Of course, Brian Deegan wins the first segment in that car. He has made his way to fourth, but he has got his hands full of Cletus McFarland in that 48 right now. Looks like Alex Bowman might be in there ripping it right now, getting a little bit of contact on that 38 of L.S. George. Look at Kurt Busch. It looks like me driving to church. No, no, no hard work at all going on inside that 25-01 car. Wow, look at that. Spun out the number seven, boys. He smokes the tires. Boy, Kevin Smith is hot. Spun out in the, in the bus stop area. Kevin Smith. Looks like Kurt Busch in that 2501 car. We got two of them. Let's lock together down in three and four, all up in Cletus's grass. Oh, wow. They're really fighting it out here. The number 88, and it looks like old Kyle from Busch and Boy said, not today, sucker. And 88 is Cameron McConchy. He actually won the Danger Ranger race here about a month ago. Look at that. Kurt Busch out there commanding lead over Nick Seuss at 21. Side-by-side -side blog. You got L.S. George following it up with Alex Bowman. Alex Bowman just kind of hanging back there, going through the bus stop. Let's see if he tries to make a pass here. It looks like Alex is just trying to set him up right now. Once again, that 2501 car of Kurt Busch letting it eat. Looks like we got some lap traffic. Nick Zeus just took out another barrel. In there the 30, we go. 38 car, LS George overshot the entrance of the bus stop. That's going to let Alex Bowman in at 48 take that third spot away. There it is right there. Alex Bowman out in front of LS George in that 38 car. Coming out of turn two, about to go down to the bus stop. And LS George closed the gap of Alex Bowman in the number 48. Well, they're really getting loose right there in the bus stop. Oh, we got a car spun out. Number 50. It's Tom Bailey in that 50 car. Tom Bailey, the legend himself, spun out in the bus stop. Boy, he's hot right through the grass. And you know, the most comical thing I believe I'm seeing right now is the eight car with Parker Kligerman. You can tell it's an ex-police car because the searchlight on the left A post, he's got it on, burning, <laughs> shining throughout the racetrack. <laughs> oh, look, you got Kurt Busch out there going through the bus stop. You got Nick Seuss at side-by-side -side blog in the 21. Alex Bowman right behind him in the 48. There's the spotlight I was talking about. It's been shining <laughs> since the green flag of this restart. Boy, he's trying to blind somebody. I'm not. I don't even know if he knows it's on because I like to say it was <laughs> on when they when they did the restart. Looks like he's driving uh, Blake Wilkie's old car with the Shreddy sticker on the side of it. You know that car's been road hard. Kurt Busch still out in front, followed up by Nick Seuss of the 21. Right behind him, Alex Bowman of the 48 car. Kurt finally got by Tom Bailey in that 50 car who had spun out and was trying to fight to stay in front of Kurt Busch. Alex Bowman trying to make a pass coming in the bus stop, hanging back a little bit from Nick Seuss, side-by-side -side block. He has definitely run him down. And now oh, we got contact right there coming out, saves it. Now that was a lap car and Nick side-by-side side said, you know what? Or Sue side-by-side side said, I, I don't have time to mess around with you. I, I've got business to do. Kurt Busch still out in front, coming down out of turn two, going through the bus stop. You got Nick Seuss at the 21, trying to close that gap. Getting chased by Alex Bowman at the 48. Looks like we've got a pretty good race right here between Nick Seuss at the 21 and the 48 car. And Alex Bowman battling it out over the second position. 
saw the seven car there with Kevin Smith make a move, take a position away from the 38 car, L.S. George. Kevin Smith still trying to get back in this thing. Got spun out in the infield right there in the bus stop area. There we go. We got Kurt Busch still leading, coming out of turn two, about to drop down into the old bus stop. Oh, he, Nick Seuss getting loose right there, gets out loose into the grass. He got greedy, Nick. He saw all those lap cars in front of our leader, Kurt Busch, and he got greedy and just overdrove the entrance to the Wow, bus look stop. at Alex Bowman taking it high, drifting that 48 car. Kurt Busch is blocked in on the front straightaway to go. There's nowhere to go with the lap cars that's there. He's finally going to clear one. But here comes that 21 car all the way down in the grass. Looks like we got a big wreck right here, the number 88 of McConkey. The number 88, McConkey, hard into the wall. Got a caution. And in the words of a famous announcer, and this changes everything. Oh, there it is right there, that lead Kurt Busch had. Going to get dwindled down on this caution. How much fluid's on the track down there? Looks like quite a bit. I would say there is. Yeah, we're going to have a little bit of an extended cleanup as we've got uh, about a little over 37 minutes. Let's today. hear it for him, everybody. Give it up. Let's see if we can see exactly what happened over in turn four. Looks like Ellis George got into that back bumper, couldn't save it. And he smacked that wall. Well, he, he was spinning down to the infield to the left, and when he got hit, he overcorrected and just a hard, hard lick into the outside wall for that 88 car, Cameron McCunchy. A lot of damage, and as you said, a lot of fluid. That was your winner of Danger Ranger, Cameron McConkey out there in that 88. Glad to see he's all right. Let's get up for that number 88 car. Let's hear it for him. Come on, let's go. Give it up for Cameron McConkey out there. Your winner, Danger Ranger. Glad you're all right, brother. Yeah, I talked to him earlier this morning. Just a, a pleasant guy from upstate New York. Does some drag racing. Uh, but his night will be over here in the 2.4 hours of LaMullis. We're closing in on 100 laps completed. <laughs> it's amazing. It is amazing we've been able to win. We still have over 36 minutes to go in this segment right here. Yeah, I'm very surprised at how many cars are still out here. I thought that the kidney was really going to be an issue, but the guys have honestly done a really good job. The grass is not as destroyed as I thought it would be. I thought they were the first five laps, I thought we were going to have five cars gone. It's made it <laughs> To me, it's made it a better race. No oh, doubt it's made it definitely. a better race. It definitely gave it a new element. I love it. Looks like they're getting this car down here in the infield. So let's take a look at right here. It looks like Blake Wilkie, the 357, looks like he just got loose and just couldn't keep it. Tried to correct, spun all the way around. Blake Wilkie, 357. Ronnie Renner was the driver of the first part of the race. So shreddy life, my boy. This was a spin headed into the bus stop. There you see the seven car. Kevin Smith on the outside, the 21 car, just gets into that left rear quarter panel, Nick turns Zeus. around, mm. game on. Kevin Smith is hot. He smokes the tires on that bad boy. Watch this right here. Talk about the barrels. Oh. Bam. <laughs> Kurt Busch took it out, so yes, not today. Did. Yes, he did. As he passes L.S. George on the inside, coming out of the bus stop, going into turn three. George said, I'm going to try to get loose. Kurt said, that's fine. I'm going to take this pass. Yeah, Kurt got a barrel at one part of the corner and L.S. George at the other. Like you said, now, if you look at that 22 car that has all those uh, pool noodles, they went from about 12 to about three. They definitely have. <laughs> the number has dwindled. I'm shocked there's any still hanging off. Of <laughs> We've got a little bit of fluid cleanup down here in coming off turn four. There's the pool noodles you were talking about. Nick, the 22 car. I think that's Rick side-by-side -side blog. It is. It is. That's right. Give it up for old Cameron out there. Glad to see you all right, brother. Well, that's a good-looking pace truck, van, mullet having, box getting, summit, freedom factory having, van right there, brother. All the bald eagles in that thing.
Yeah, I don't know that I've ever seen a driver that was involved in a wreck leave the scene on a forklift. <laughs> <laughs> That's a first. You don't see that every day. What? Welcome to Freedom Factory. All right, let's take a look at this right here, the 22 car Rick side by side blog. Just got loose coming off the exit, tried to correct it and just overcorrected. Nobody involved. No harm, no foul. Rick side by side blog with pool noodles and all. Yeah, they're really ripping on those uh, pool noodles there. Loving life. There he is, big uh, YouTube channel, side by side blog. Check them out. Good friends of mine, great people. They got some uh, really great content out. There you are, right there, your leader, the 2501, Kurt Bush, followed up by Nick Seuss of the 21, Alex Bowman of the 48 car with Kevin Smith in the number seven. I'm going to be anxious to see what Alex Bowman in that 48 car does on this restart he, he knows one opportunity that to get up there and battle with as you see Kurt Busch right here in the 25 one car is to get by that 21 car and see if he can make some hay that's this restart's going to be pretty critical and again they were distinctly told at the driver's meeting there's two yellow lines in turns four is the leader controls it but no jump in the start no no Lagging back and getting a run on them, you, you, the leader will go at the second yellow line, which almost is in the dead middle of turn four. Yeah, Nick Seuss out there in that 21. Can he hold off Alex Bowman? Well, that's going to be a key, I think, on this restart. Nick Seuss with side-by-side -side blog, he is the guy that if they want him to do anything, he will do – Literally anything they want. If you want to jump in a side by side with Danny Duncan, huh, guess who'll do it? Nick Seuss. Shout out to the Nick Seuss out there in that 21. Followed up Alex Bowman in the 48. You got Kevin Smith in that number seven. LS George in the 38. Then you got Blake Wilkie in that 357. Tom Bailey in that 50. Brent PFI Speed in that 74. Can Brent from PFI Speed? Make a comeback and have a back-to-back -back win at 2.4 hours of the mullets. Yeah, you know, you mentioned the seven car of Kevin Smith sitting back there in the fourth spot. And, of course, they finished fourth in the first segment with uh, Taylor Ray. It's like they make a run. They just they can't quite get all the way to the front. They get up there to third. They get up there to second. And then, then something happens. They fall back to fourth or fifth. But they definitely have been hanging in there as we ride with Alex Bowman. Running in the third spot in that 48 car. It's funny here, we got, as I look at my phone, we got Nick Seuss sending me a Snapchat as he's in the car. Leo is in the car now, not me. I was the first leg. Thanks a lot, Seuss. <laughs> All we can go off of is what they told us when we were in the garage area. But there was a lot of, I was telling someone earlier in, as I was walking through who was going to start the race, there was a lot of, I think, I think. So, obviously, on the thinking, they, they changed their mind just a little bit. Well, I'm glad Leo's driving because he's definitely faster than Seuss. <laughs> and that's in the 21 car. The 21 yeah. car. He just, he just sent me that right now. So, Leo from Side by Side Blog is in the 21. It's not Nick Seuss. Thank God. Maybe the car will finish. Good friend of mine, Nick Seuss, out there, Persian Persuasion. Yeah, I'm, I really do think that the 2501 car of Kurt Busch and then Alex Bowman, and then you've got Leo. Now, Leo's sitting in second. Can he hold off Alex Bowman? Once Bowman, if Bowman can make that pass, you talk about an epic race, and then you're going to worry about lap traffic. But I get a feeling watching Kurt Busch as we saw him in that in-car shot, he was just running that thing as hard as he needed to. I don't think he is, he is abusing that equipment whatsoever. They're down there. Looks like uh, they're getting everything cleaned up down there. About to get back to racing soon. Well, before we take the green flag on this restart, let's hear a word from Summit Racing Equipment.
And again, we want to thank the folks from Summit Racing Equipment for being a part of the 2.4 Hour of La Mullets. Uh, the barrels have had a hard night. The grass has had a hard night. Uh, but you know what? We're fixing to go back racing here. So that's the biggest thing is the Summit Racing Equipment delivery truck. It is off. Let's see what Alex Bowman can do here that's on right. this restart. Here we go. Looks like you got Kurt Busch pushing it hard in turn one. Alex Bowman did not get a good restart whatsoever because that allowed Kevin Smith in that seven car to go to third. But look, Boy, look at, at the that contact. 21 car. Boy, Leo is getting rough right there. Getting back, gets spun out by Kevin Smith, the seven. Wow. Here we go. Kurt Busch in the 2501 car still in your lead. Followed up. Looks like Kevin Smith taking it high. Can he take that number two position away as he comes into the bus stop contact with the 21 and the number seven car. But Kevin Smith, he worked turns two in the entrance of the bus stop. He's going to get sideways, though, and saves it down in three and four. Wow. And, seven. and the nitrous oxide is burning on that seven. Boy, look at that. Alex Bowman said, I'm about to make a pass. Can Alex Bowman make a pass going high? Is he going to shoot down low, make a pass on that 21? Swoop it through the bus stop area. You got Kurt Busch, the 2501 car, still your leader. Alex Bowman in that 48, trying to take a high lap, high lead right there, see if he can pass that 21 of Leo from Side by Side Blog. Yeah, Alex Bowman coming out of the bus stop the last time. He went straight to the top of the racetrack against the wall. Here he goes again through the bus stop. Can he make it work? He cannot. Boy, they are fighting it out right there. That 21 and Leo from Side by Side Blog. Alex Bowman, all he can do is save it right there. Alex Bowman said, let me get on by, brother. Not today. Alex Bowman takes that number three away from the 21 car. Yeah, he was all the way down on the apron in turns three and four, and he's going to move to the third spot. Well, we got a we got a battle going on right here. Kurt Busch, you got Kevin Smith. Like I said, that number seven. Doesn't matter what he's driving. Kevin Smith is a competitor. He is a winner. Let's see if he can take on old Kurt Busch. Where Kurt seems to be so strong is on the exit of the corner, especially on the exit of the bus stop as they go through turns three and four. Going down to the bus stop, you got Kurt Busch, still your leader, followed up by Kevin Smith in that number seven. And you got Alex Bowman of the 48 in the 21 car. Leo side-by-side -side blog. Tell you what, Kevin Smith in that seven is not going away, though. He's staying with about two to three car lengths of Kurt Busch. Wow, we got a car into the wall, turn three, turn four. No caution so far. Looks like a backup vehicle. Actually, it's the number one car. I think that might be Lyle, Lyle Barnett Lyle that's Barnett in there. They were debating about who was going to run first segment, who was going to run second. Looks like to me he's going to take that one car to the garage area. Here we go, Kurt Busch and Kevin Smith still battling out, going through the bus stop right there, followed up by Alex Bowman of the 48. Can Alex Bowman make a pass? Looks like he's getting a little loose right there. But here comes Kevin Smith, and that's Kevin Smith. side by side down the front straightaway. Can he hold the lead? Kevin Smith, the number seven car, in the lead right now, past Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch trying to come down in the bus stop. Can he make a pass? Trying to do the crossover, but Kevin Smith so smooth through there, pulls away by about a half a car length through three and four. Here we go, Kevin Smith, the number seven. All it up, Kurt Busch. Then you got Alex Bowman. Tight top three pack right here coming into turn two. Kevin Smith about to drop down into the... Old bus stop. Kurt Busch going to fight a little lap traffic right here. Lyle Barnett's about to get right into in the way. Excuse me, not Lyle Barnett. Here we go. Kurt Busch trying to make a pass. But that was a difference maker, that lap car down in turns three and four. But Kevin Smith about a car length lead. Alex Bowman continues to reel both our men. Gets a good run through one and two that time. Boy, they're pushing it hard. Alex Bowman taps that bat bunker, bumper of Kurt Busch, spins him out. Oh, he keeps it together. But that's going to allow Kevin Smith to pull about a half a straightaway lead as Alex Bowman takes second spot away from Kurt Busch. 
Now let's see if old Kurt Busch is going to drop down into this old bus stop, get a little revenge on Alex Bowman. Well, and now the 21 car. He is a player in this thing, pulls up there in the fourth spot. Kevin Smith, your leader right now, number seven, followed up by Alex Bowman of the 48. You got Kurt Busch followed by Leo from Side by Side Blog in that 21 car. There you see second, third, and fourth right there. Led by Alex Bowman in the 48 car. Kevin Smith, your leader right now, coming out of turn three. Dropping down, keeping the low line, and turn four, followed up by Alex Bowman. Starting to have to deal with a little bit of lap traffic. It just seems like Kevin Smith, no matter what we do here, he won the 2021 Freedom 500, third in the Danger Ranger, and seventh in last year's 2.4 hour of the mullets. But right now, he may have a problem with Alex Bowman in that 48 car. Alex got real close to him on the exit of the bus stop. Yeah, Alex Bowman, giving it all he's got, looks like. Trying to close that gap of Kevin Smith in that number seven. Kurt Busch dropped back just a little bit. You got Leo side by side blog trying to take that number three position away from Kurt Busch going into the bus stop. It's almost like Kurt Busch's 2501 car is just starting to fade just a little bit. I don't I don't know if he's abused those tires or what, but it's not the car that it was earlier in this race or in this segment. Yeah, you got Kevin Smith up there battling it out. Alex Bowman taking it high, going to drop it down low, coming into the bus stop, figuring out that line. What's the line he's going to take? Is he following Kevin Smith? Is he going to make this pass coming into turn three? Coming in hot on that bumper. You got Kevin Smith drifting, coming out of turn three. Nick, I think a difference maker is going to be these lap cars. They just passed by the 22 car, but there's three of them. That's just about four or five car lengths in front of our leader, Kevin Smith. It's like I said, it's going to come down to lap traffic, caution, and how much tire you got left. You're seeing it right now with this lap traffic as they're trying to go through right here. Kevin Smith had to hit the brakes. Number 50, Alex Bowman trying to make a – number 48 trying to make that pass. And meanwhile, Kurt Busch has faded now to fourth in that 2501 car. Now, what do you think? Do you think that's strategy or do you think there's something wrong with that car? I think he's faded way too much for it to be strategy, but Alex Bowman is just beating the rear bumper off that seven car right now. He's just waiting for that time when Kevin Smith misses his mark or a lap traffic gets in his way. That's right. Kevin Smith, that number seven, still your leader, followed up by Alex Bowman. When I talked to Bowman earlier tonight, he talked about how he won those four races here, said he either ran really good or he ran really bad. Looks like he's running really good tonight. Coming in that bus stop, Kevin Smith, still your leader. Boy, we got some got some action right there. Looks like Kurt Busch rubbing and racing with old Rick from Side by Side Blog. Yeah, Kurt's car just continues to fade. It just Kevin Smith just does not make a mistake. He doesn't make a mistake even when he's having to deal with lap traffic in that seven car. You look at right now, number 48, Alex Bowman, dealing with that 1776 car. Puts him back about four cars. That lap traffic really put a number on him right there. Kevin Smith still out in front. Alex Bowman trying to make a move, coming into turn one. And with him clearing that 74 car with Brent with PFI, he's got some pretty clear racetrack, but now Alex Bowman's grabbed another gear. He's pulled back up there. He just got to clear this 74 car. Boy, they're ripping and racing right now. You got Alex Bowman. You know he's wanting it. Can he run down the number seven car, Kevin Smith? Both of them will not have to deal with lap traffic for a little bit here. Let's see what he can do. Kevin Smith just, again, he just doesn't miss his mark even through the bus stop back there. Nope, right here, though. Bowman trying to make it, trying to go down low. Can he make the move coming out of turn four? Kevin Smith still pulls away with about a three-car lead. We still have under 20 minutes to go, just a little over 19 minutes in this final segment, the 2.4 hour of LaMullets, the Freedom Factory USA, Bradenton, Florida. Kevin Smith coming out of the bus stop, followed up by Alex Bowman. Oh, Kevin Smith, he, he made a mistake down there coming out of the bus stop. Bowman pulls right up to him. Bowman Boy, here we go. Him down the front straight away. Kevin Smith still holding him off, but it looks like Bowman's going to cut it down low. Take your lead coming into turn two. Alex Bowman in the 48 car 
holds off Kevin Smith with the number seven coming down to the bus stop. Kevin Smith just completely missed the late exit of the bus stop, and then Bowman gets the lead and then ran him high in one and two, and now he's pulled away to two car lengths as we are under 19 minutes to go. Bowman like a cat just playing with that mouse. Now let's see if Kevin Smith can do the same thing. I just had commented Kevin Smith just does not make mistakes, but it's like he, he just missed the exit of the bus stop. This whole time we talked about Kurt Busch, Kurt Busch, Kurt Busch. Then you got the number 48 of Alex Bowman and Kevin Smith ripping. See right there, that, that's that's right before he right after he had missed it, but he had missed the exit of the bus stop. Bowman gives him a little nudge right there on the exit of turn four, turns it down, and just takes the lead away. Yep, once again, Alex Bowman out in front. Followed up by Kevin Smith. And you got the 21 car. He's he's back there quite a ways. He's he's got a lot of contact right there with Brent from PFI Speed. It's Once soft. again, Alex Bowman still out in front, getting chased by Kevin Smith. Yeah, you just saw Alex having to deal with that 999 with James Jack stand. He can't deal it around with lap traffic because if he does, Kevin Smith will be right back there on him in that seven car. Well, it looks like Bowman. If we could get an in-car uh, video of him, just see him just down there just driving real easy. Kevin Smith trying to close the gap. Your number two, you still got the number 21 car of Leo from Side by Side Blog. And Kurt Busch still in fourth place. That 2501 car followed up by Blake Wilkie in the number five. Look like we had a car spun out there that looks like Jack Stan Jimmy, the 999. Boy, he just, yeah, tear it up, brother. Let that eat. There's that shot you were asking for, Nick. Just nice <laughs> and smooth in that 48 car. Alex Bowman pulled out to a pretty nice lead. Kevin Smith right behind him. Bowman's got his line. Not much lap traffic. I haven't seen him hit the nitrous at all. I have not seen the yellow light on on that 48 car. Dropping down right there into that bus stop. You got Alex Bowman coming in hot. Little little tap on that 24 of Kyle from the Boosted Boys. Kevin Smith closing the gap in turn three, falling the exact same line as Alex Bowman. Yeah, Kevin Smith, he, he sees blood in the water right now with his lap traffic. Will they hold Alex Bowman up? He gets, gets blocked. Yeah, gets there comes pinched. Kevin Smith. He took advantage of Kevin it. Kevin Smith, oh, smashes that front bumper right into Bowman. Bowman pulls away. Kevin Smith still hot on his trail coming out of the bus stop. I'm not sure I'm not sure if Bowman has a flat tire or not as they just beating and banging through three and four. Boy, side look at that. Side. Side. Jason, get up on your feet. Let's see it. Kevin Smith going to come across there, going into turn one. Alex Bowman, number two, that number 48 car. Can't tell if that tire, how much pressure's in it. Boy, it looks like it's loose. It is. Yeah. Alex Bowman spins out. Kevin Smith, your leader, Alex Bowman, tires, shot. Boy, he's hot. I'm going to just tell you right now. Kevin Smith and Alex Bowman battling it out. And, Larry, you said it right there, coming out of turn three, going into turn four. I think that tire. That tire, that tire, that tire. He got over there, turn two, tires out going through the bus stop. Finally, it just gave away. So now Kevin Smith, as we've got under 14 minutes to go in this race, he is now back to the lead of the 2.4 hour of little mullets. Well, like you said, caution, caution, caution. Lap traffic, tires. You see it right there with Alex Bowman. Get some contact, lose a tire. Spins out, he's done. They have, that changed the tire, but he's going to be a lap down. That See? was some good racing right there for the lead. That's as good as it gets right there. So now you got Kevin Smith, the number seven, in your lead, followed up by Leo, 21, side-by-side -side blog, Kurt Busch, the man, the myth, the legend. Then you got my man, Blake Wilkie of the 357 in your top four. All right, let's take a look at this right here. There you see the seven car. He gets into the there. There's Ooh. where the tire went down right there. Just drove right into the left rear. Of course, 
that bumper. The, the seven, like that. Kevin Smith loses the front bumper, but that was the detriment to that left rear tire on that 48 car Ooh, right there. Oh, you can see it. Wow. Boy, what a, what a race. <laughs> That's as good as it gets right there. But lap traffic, to your point, Nick, that was the difference maker. Yeah, Larry, when you said that tire, that tire, and I'm looking, I'm like, I can't hardly see it. Boy, when he got to turn two, you could really see it. There it is right there. It just gives out. It's completely He's done. Boy, and he tried to save it. He's doing a good drift right there. He was going to drive it till it wouldn't go no more. <laughs> Look at that, boy. It just slings it everywhere. There you go. It looks like you got Kevin Smith. Going to be side-by-side side with the 21. Now, Alex, he is back out on the racetrack, but to your point, at least a couple of laps down. Kevin Smith, your leader, followed up with Leo side-by-side -side blog. You got Kurt Busch. I don't know. He's, he's right back in it. He's not out of it, guarantee so, you. With the amount of time that's left, is he the cat and the mouse just kind of toying with it, then going to take the kill, or is that car hurt? Let's see what this 21 car. Boy, look, look at, at that. Kurt Busch down to the bottom of the front straightaway, down to the bottom in one and two, right up side by side with the seven car. Kurt Busch still trying to take that lead. He's coming out of there, got some contact. He did not get a good run through the first part of the bus stop. The 21 car is going to take the second spot away from him. You got Kevin Smith still leading, followed up by Leo from side by side blog. Kurt Busch, to your point, not a good entrance to the bus stop. Heard him on that right there. You got Blake Wilkie in that 357 car. He's running it down. Get some contact right there with Kurt Busch. You got Brent from PFI Speed hitting hard right there. Spun out into turn three. Brent from PFI Speed spun out turn three. Totally did that to himself. He has nobody to be mad at but himself. <laughs> well, we got a battle up front right now. Leo side by side blogging that 21, battling out with Kevin Smith at the number seven. Contact going into the bus stop. Can they keep it together? Kurt Busch sitting back there waiting. Oh, we got spun out, Kevin Smith! Turn three, spun out. You got Leo side-by-side -side blog. Here comes Kurt Busch trying to push it, coming out of turn four. Caution's out, Nick. Caution is out. You could see that happening before they even entered the bus stop. You knew it was going to happen somewhere over there. Oh, what a race. What a race. Kevin Smith is, is looking for someone, and I think I know who it is. That's just hard racing. Let's take a look at this right here. This is coming through the bus stop, and, and what started that right there is the, the 21 car, Leo, he, he just he got in the grass, and his car just shot back on the racetrack and gets in the quarter panel of Kevin Smith and spins him out. Just hard racing, hard racing. Yeah, I mean, what a what a crazy event in the last five minutes. And you know what, Nick? As that little clock gets smaller, it's going to get even crazier, I can promise you. You got Alex Bowman leading the race. Alex Bowman blows the tire. And you got Kevin Smith leading the race. Gets spun out. Look who's back in the front. Hurt Bush. Let's take a look at this 74 car that's been out. And again, he, he was trying to save it. I got to give the man credit. The 74 car, Brent with PFI, he tried his best to save it, but it just would not work. So we got Kurt Busch once again, been up front, fell back, came back up front. Well, we, we're getting the word that the 21 car has been sent to the rear of the field for what went on right there. So he will start, start tail in Charlie. And again, just nine and a half minutes to go in this race. So oh. what we're getting word is is Kevin Smith is the leader of this race in this seven car because of what happened over there with the 21 car is the Summit Racing Equipment 
delivery truck pulls off. We're going to get a restart here with just under nine minutes to go. It's going to be crazy. All right, let's see what can happen here on this restart. Kurt Busch gets a great restart on the outside on that 25.01, but will he be set up for the entrance to the bus stop? Looks like Kevin Smith still out there with the lead. Can Kurt Busch close this gap going into the bus stop? Kevin Smith pulling away. Here we go. Kevin Smith still out in front. Kurt Busch closes the gap. Little stumble by number seven. Kurt Busch, can he close it? And that's, remember the mistake that Kevin Smith made earlier over there on the exit of the bus stop. He can't make a mistake like that. Kurt Busch will be on him like white on rice. Here he is, Kevin Smith entering the bus stop. You got Kurt Busch in second place. Look at him, makes another fumble. Trying to make it up right here in turn three. Kurt Busch going to make a pass. Going into turn four, your leader, Kurt Busch. Followed up by Kevin Smith. And Kevin Smith is on the nicer talk side through turns three and four, but he made that mistake over there halfway through the bus stop. Kurt Busch takes the lead. Those little stumbles are killing him. I don't know what it is. Something, they're just something that's making him stumble coming out of this turn. It's called driving through the rearview mirror instead of out the windshield. That's right. You got Kurt Busch right here leading that race. Coming out of turn four, followed up. Kevin Smith. Ooh, big time barrel. They're all gone over there on the exit. Boy, you got some contact right there. Kevin Smith. Whoa, a lot of contact in turn two. Kevin Smith, Kurt Busch. Going through the bus stop, a lot of contact. Still contact. Well, we got a, we got a race coming out of turn three. Kevin Smith, next. Both neck. of them, look, the yellow lights just a blinking. Both of them on the nitrous oxide. Boy, Kurt Bush, he wants this win. Gonna swoop down low, going into turn two. Let's see what they can do, a little contact. Oh, saves it, Kevin Smith. Here comes the crossover. Will he lay on that right rear corner panel? Kevin Smith pulls away. Now what Kevin Smith needs to do, he's all on the nitrous oxide. Drive out the windshield, not the rear view mirror. Here we go, Kevin Smith, your leader, followed up by Kurt Busch. Big battle in the front of the pack. Kurt Busch gonna try to drop down going into turn two. Can he make a pass to the bus stop? Uh, by the way, company's coming. The 21 car is working up into the third spot. So he has come from the rear of the field all the way back up to running for third. That's Leo side-by-side -side block followed by Blake Wilkie in that 357 car. Kevin Smith still fending off. Kurt Busch going into the bus stop. And they are going to catch a lap car possibly over in turn three and four. Kurt Busch gets into oh. the right rear. Kevin Smith hangs on to it. Boy, look at him, that's a race right there. Kevin Smith, Kurt Busch, coming out of turn four. Kevin Smith pulling away. 357 car, Blake Wilkie spinning around. He'll get it back going. Here we go, as they come into the bus stop, there's gonna be some lap traffic. Can't Kurt Busch make a pass? Heavy on that bumper right there. All four cars on the bumper. Look at the traffic, everybody's on the bumper. But nobody could go anywhere. Nobody, they were just, they were like jammed up. There ain't much bumper left on that, on that number seven car. Front or rear. <laughs> five, we got just a little over five minutes to go, Nick. We got a race right here. Kevin Smith, your leader, Kurt Busch, hot on his trail, coming out of that bus stop. Look a little fumble. Looks like Kurt Busch trying to drop it down. Yeah, Kurt's overdriving his race car now as that seven car is pulling away to a good four or five car lengths. Looks like that 1776 car high on the bank in turn one and two. Race still continues. Look at that bumper flies off Kevin Smith's car. It's right there on the bus stop. Debris everywhere on the bus stop. Let's see. Look at those, look at those lights flashing. Hurt Bush on the nitrous trying to make a pass. Kevin Smith. But Nick, if Vice Grip Garage in that 1776, he looks like he may make it. They kept the flagman kept watching him because if he was not going to make it, that was going to bring a caution out. Looks like he's going to be okay now. He has cleared the racetrack. Kurt Busch is getting everything he can out of that 2501 right now. Boy, he digs, he keeps dropping down, trying to make that pass in turn three and turn four. But Kevin Smith stays on his line, pulls about three cars ahead. There we go, Kevin Smith dropping down into the old bus stop. Can Kurt Busch make a pass? 
Now Kevin Smith is back to where he was, not making mistakes. Got a little bit sideways right there over in turns three, but now he's back to not making mistakes. That's what it's going to take. He makes a mistake, Kurt Busch will be there. There he is, Kevin Smith, your leader, followed up by Kurt Busch in that 2501 car. You got Leo side-by-side -side blog in third, but here we go, dropping into that old bus stop. Kurt Busch hot on that bumper, trying to make a pass. I can promise you as this thing winds down, if Kurt Busch stays in contact with that seven car, his night's not going to be good. Boy, he's trying. He's pushing. He's giving it all he's got right here. Kevin Smith driving that number seven, bumperless, coming into the bus stop. Followed up. Kurt Busch trying to make that pass. Here we go. Can he make it? Got a great run through the bus stop, but will the lap cars make a difference? They are running up all on the bumper, the 999. Boy, look at everybody. They're getting fired up. Kevin Smith, number seven, getting chased down by Kurt Busch with that 2501 car. Under three minutes to go. Three minutes. Boy, a little contact there. Kevin Smith. Can Kurt Busch close the gap? He's going to pass him going on turn three. Kurt Busch, Kevin Smith coming in hot on turn four. Tom Bailey in that 50 car in the way, side by side at the line. Let's see what's going to happen in one and two. Kevin Smith leans on Kurt Busch. Oh. Kevin Smith, your leader, Kurt Busch, trying to bring the lead back, going through the bus stop, super hot. Got the 22 car that's slow. I think he's going to get out of the way. He had spun right there at the exit of the bus stop, but I think he's okay right now. Kurt Busch moving up to the high side. Kevin Smith, three wide down the front straightaway. Will this allow Kurt Busch to get the run on the high side through one and two? Turns it down to the bottom. Oh, oh, look at him go. go. Look at him go. Takes it high, drops it low. Lap traffic's going to hose him. He's got cars taking out barrels. Kevin Smith, still your leader, getting chased down by Kurt Busch. Closing in on a minute and a half to go in the 2.4 hours of Le Mullet's here at Bradenton, Florida, Freedom Factory USA. Kevin Smith, still your leader. Kurt Busch, hot on his tail, coming into the bus stop. You got the 21 of Leo from Side by Side Blog right there behind him. A lot of contact going through the bus stop. Kevin Smith, little stumble right there. Can Kurt Busch close the gap? Kevin Smith just needs to be smart, be smooth. He has a clear selling in front of him as we are closing in on one minute to go. Kevin Smith, still your leader, coming into the bus stop. This is where he struggles right here. Coming out of the bus stop, there's a little hiccup. Coming into turn three, I don't know if there's a spot in the track. Right here. He got a little tail happy right there, but so did Kurt Busch as they're both on that nitrous oxide. Boy, look at that. Kevin Smith, can he keep the lead? Kurt Busch going to try to make this pass coming into turn two, going through the bus stop. You got 21, Leo, side-by-side -side blog, still in third place, battling it out back there. Kevin Smith did not get through the bus stop. Good, Kurt Busch, I think Kevin Smith had something actually fall off the race car, but he's going to hold the lead coming through three and four. Boy, here we go. Kevin Smith coming out of turn one. Kurt Busch right behind him going into turn two. What can he do going through this bus stop, Larry? What do you think? Yeah, he's just got to be smooth. I mean, Kurt Busch, you can only run a car through there so fast. The only way you get any ground made up is if someone makes a mistake. White flag for Kevin Smith. One lap to go here in the 2.4 hours of LaMullins. Kevin Smith, your leader, Kurt Busch, hot on his trail, going through the bus stop. What can happen? Are they going to use the nitrous? Look at that, Kurt Busch using that nitrous, bumping that bumper. They look like they're locked together. Kurt Busch is going to get the lead. Kurt gets the lead. Woo, we got Kurt Busch coming out of turn four. Looks like you're going to have Kurt Busch coming across. Your winner, Kurt Busch, 2.4 hours of the mullets. Kurt Busch. A winner of the Daytona 500, a winner of the Coke 600, and now he is a winner of the 2.4 hours of LaMullet's Freedom Factory USA. Give it up for Kurt Busch. Woo! Come on, Larry, give me some on that, brother. Woo! What a race, what a race. Freedom Factory, let's hear it. 2.4 hours, look at him getting into it. Whoa, Kevin Smith spins out Kurt Busch in turn three, a little revenge. Kevin Smith, look at him, boy. Uh-oh.
we might we got some action going on here. There it is, baby. Let's give it up for him. Kurt Busch letting it eat. Let's go, baby. That 2501. Kurt said it ain't my first time, baby. Let me show you how you light these tires up, boys. This uh, kind of has a look like Denny Hamlin and Alex Bowman at Martinsville <laughs> a few weeks ago. <laughs> what a great race. 2.4 hours of the mullets. Your man, click, clack, daddy's back. Nick Savage, the man, the myth, the legend. Larry Mack, baby. That's as good as it gets right there. That's as good as it gets. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Let's go, baby. What a finish. Come down to the last lap. And what I told you, Kurt Busch gets that rear bumper. Kevin Smith's good night's going to go bad. And that's exactly what happened over there at the exit of the bus stop. We said it. I said, what do you think, Larry? I said, do you think the car is bad or do you think he's playing with us? And I'm not going to lie to you. I thought the car was hurt. It, he faded. You know, with probably 20 minutes to go in that, I, I wouldn't have given him a chance. He had faded all the way back to fourth. But all it took was a few cautions, pulling those belts a little tighter. And next thing you know, he is up there as we now see the... Boy, uh, look at him there. He's sending it through the infield. <laughs> he just does not know how much Cletus McFarlane loves his grass. He, he has just full said, let it let it rip, Kurt Busch. Let's hear it for him. The 2501 car, your winner. Ladies and gentlemen, let's Lamont. hear it for Vaughn. Kurt Nitton Busch. And Kurt Busch. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Our second place finishers, Taylor Ray and Kevin Smith. Come on, let's hear it. Whoa, whoa, no fighting. <laughs> let's hear it for all these drivers out here. Come on. Wow. Wow. Hey, Kurt. Hey, Kurt, which, which Fiero are you going to pick? Kurt, which Fiero do you want, blue or white? Hey, Vaughn, what, what Fiero are you going to pick? There we go, Vaughn pulling up. All right, Kurt, what do you think of your... What do you think of your first race here at the Freedom Factory? I love Florida! Woo! Well, yeah. It's like a party down here all the time. I love you guys. Uh, was that a local guy? Yes, sir. Am I okay? You're good. Uh, of course. Did you see that was the first time I used nitrous through the chicane? Ah. All right, guys. Let's hear it one last time for Kurt Busch and Vaughn Gantt Jr. Come on. Come on. Hey, hold on. Hey, who's getting which Fiero? Who's getting which Fiero? Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors for the blue one. Oh, he did say he had blue. <laughs> I've never been happier to win a car in victory lane. I got a Fiero. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming to the free. All right, thank you guys so much for coming to the Freedom Factory. We're going to be converting over to the burnout pad. Who's coming to Cleveland Cars tomorrow? Hey, listen, if you don't got your ticket yet, we'll be selling them at the gate tomorrow. We got a ton of burnout cars. We're going to set up the burnout pad tonight, and it's going to be amazing. So thank you guys so much for coming to the Freedom Factory tonight. Let's hear it for the freaking Freedom Factory. All right, let's hear it for the United States of America. USA, 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 USA. All right, thank you to Summit Racing, and thanks to all of you watching the pay-per-view at home. That's it. Thanks for watching. Do it for now. We'll freaking see you later. Look at this right here. There you see the seven car, Kevin Smith, Kurt Busch, Coming out of the exit of the bus stop, Kevin Smith didn't get through there that good, but Kurt Busch did into that right rear quarter panel, 
And he, Kurt Busch knew the next flag was going to be the checkered flag, and that's exactly what he got back to right there. It looked there. like they was almost stuck together It was together an interesting right race because Kurt caught him every time. You see another chicane, replay, Kurt, all in straight, the grass so. with the right side tires, but he just he got a good run through there. Kevin did not get that good of a run. Boy, look how dirty that bus stop look, is. Look, he picked the whole rear of the car up off the ground right there. <laughs> he was not going to get off of him until he cleared him. It looked like they were stuck right there. Look at how he's, yeah. he's driving through that, trying to correct, saves it. I can promise right you, Kurt Busch is not getting off the throttle right there. Oh, no. And that's all it took right there. That's it. That's all she wrote, folks. What Kevin a, Smith tried to save it, but, man, what a finish. What, what a race. A finish. Like we said, at, at the part of the second race, you're going to have to watch for Kurt Busch, Alex Bowman, Kevin Smith. What a race. Well, I tell you what, I had about as much fun as you could have. In, in what a two-part different race. I mean, Brian Deegan just dominating the race. 20 laps to go. I thought Kurt Busch is out of this thing, and all it took was some cautions, a restart, and next thing you know, he is up there battling for the win. Uh, he, Von Gittin Jr., he kept it in the game in the first segment. Yeah. Kurt Busch closed the deal there in segment number two. Well, that's what I was wondering. I was like, is, is the car hurt? Because he went from top of the pack, dropped back about four or five. And I'm sitting here going, he's running so hard and so strong, there's something wrong with the car. But, boy, there wasn't nothing wrong with that car because he pushed right to the front. <laughs> yes, he did, especially once that white flag was out. And I want to give it an attaboy to Cletus McFarlane and everybody here at the Freedom Factory USA for making the change in the racetrack. That made a – we had some great racing before, but this made it unbelievable racing. So, again, thank you to everybody here at Freedom Factory USA. Uh, thank to Nick Savage, Spicy Spence down in the pits. I'm Larry Mack Reynolds, and thank you to Summit Racing Equipment. Let's hear a word from them. Have a great night. Happy holidays, everybody.